Welcome to your aunties can never. We are your favorite aunties on the internet and we've got a great show for you today. For those that don't know, I'm All Things Sugar and Shade Sade. Hey. hey. And I'm here with... It's your resident favorite Caribbean queen, but not your only Caribbean queen for the last time. <laughs> oh, don't make me cry, please. <laughs> Auntie Marianne Sunshine, my last show. But you're going to be back again. Yeah, you will. I better be. Seriously. And you've been amazing, Mara. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Girl, Thank you for having me. I've had such a blast. I've had a great time, guys. Honestly. Thank we're going to have a great show today. We certainly are. We really are. <laughs> Seriously. First of all, guys, how's, how was Easter? Because we're just back. Yeah. Was it, was it good? Nice. I was working. Oh, really? Like, editing, working. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. why I was a bit like, yeah, because I, yeah, I, I, I had, I I had work stuff. to do. Yeah. So it was okay. a little bit annoying. No Easter eggs? No, no Easter eggs? I, went to, I no. went to a sneaker brunch. Oh, did you? Did How I was that? sneaker brunch? Before Easter? Or was that after Easter? I yeah, saw I pictures. Yeah. On the yes, green. Was, that, was it then or was it the week before? I don't remember. I feel like it was the week before. I feel like it was the week before. Mm. See? I don't remember nothing. Yeah. I follow you. Okay. <laughs> Good Friday, mm -hmm. I went to Brixton. I haven't been to Brixton for ages, but I went to like the Black Cultural Archives. Oh, nice. Because my friend from Atlanta was here. Mm -hmm. And it was really weird being a tour guide and talking her through black history. I know bare things, you know. Oh, that's I that. know bare things. I yeah. mean, I'm not surprised. But, but yeah, I was. <laughs> <laughs> but no, literally Brixton was the blackest place I could bring her mm -hmm. in London. And she's like, this is gentrified as shit. Yeah. So it's like, rah, we really don't have areas anymore, do we? Mm. So you go northwest. Lewisham, <laughs> Lewisham. Apart from Halsden, right. I could Lewisham. only bring her to Halsden. It's a bit black. Lewisham's very yeah, black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but what touristy things could I have shown somebody from Atlanta in Lewisham or Halsden? Uh, I don't Horniman know. The, Museum. The clock. It's cute. <laughs> I haven't been Lewisham in ages, though. <laughs> the clock. Could have took her to Roundwood Park. <laughs> Roundwood, the Church Road clock. Church yeah. Road clock. No. <laughs> no. Lewisham might have been good, maybe. Yeah. But she wanted to see black history mm. and you black culture you could have you could have took her to church road and said this is no. where they changed the flats and this is where the flats were <laughs> <laughs> same road different style oh wow like a yeah. virtual tour it literally is <laughs> yeah so that was it that was kind of interesting because it's like there's there's so few places i can bring her mm -hmm. which is weird considering how long we've been here but yeah. yeah, that's another conversation for another day. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so coming up to today's show, we've got lots happening. For Enemy in Progress, we're going to be talking about Diddy. We're going to be talking about Lin May. And we're going to be talking about Rishi Sunak as well. We're also going to be welcoming to the family. It's Brandon Scott and Mo the Comedian. And we've got some juicy, juicy, juicy dilemmas as always. But guys, Farah, what do we have to do before we, we do any of that? We have Two, book the like button, 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 book the like, book the like button. Yeah. <laughs> I feel I feel like I like the solo. You, you like know? the solo, yeah, innit? I really do. It's I mean, the last time that them not did it, you were like, mm. yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we all need to. Say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dancers. Exactly. Just exactly. Dances. That's it. No ad libs. No nothing. No, no. Like, and I give it a little, a little, yeah. a little extra. Do you know what I mean? Just get me. Yeah, I like Just it. Saying, we AKN need to tell. Yeah, we dance. need to tell the two, the group in it. <laughs> yeah, let's let's let us rule yeah. for a change. I think so, guys. I think we. I I think we've done all right. What do I you do. guys think? I do, personally. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I add a certain finesse. No, you add do. A certain, <laughs> an amazing East London hackney ghetto finesse. <laughs> Not ghetto. <laughs> you know, a certain Jamaican je ne sais quoi. Yeah. To the show. I like that. I like the Jamaican genocide. Je ne sais quoi. The Hackney East London <laughs> thing. Could have done without that. <laughs> I know too many East Londoners, you know, seriously. <laughs> but guys, also make sure you subscribe to our channel as well. Share the video with like minded people. And of course, leave us a comment. And if you're listening to us on Apple or Spotify or any other platform, make sure you give us a five star rating. That's the only ones we accept. Okay? Five stars. If it's not five stars, we're gonna send it back exactly with love but send it back well. all the same <laughs> well no <not> love <laughs> but yeah <laughs> Okay, guys, so to kick off the episode, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about 10 interesting things that happened this week, first of all. Then we're going to go into Emily in Progress and then Welcome to the Family and then Dilemmas, as I've said. So starting with our 10 interesting things that happened this week, number one is unfortunately a little bit sad. There's been quite a few deaths 
there really has quite been quite a few deaths that's mm-hmm. happened these past couple of weeks. Uh, we had iconic actor Louis Gossett Jr. So if you've ever seen Officer and a Gentleman, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he's in that. If you've seen Roots, the original Roots, he's in that. If you've recently seen Colour Purple, he is the dad of uh, Miss Seeley's Mister. husband. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's it. So he's an iconic, like Sade said, iconic actor. I just He's done so much. He's the first black actor to win a um, supporting actor, actor Oscar as well. He's, yeah, opened the doors for a lot of people. Mm. Unfortunately, he's passed. We've had a legendary pioneer in fibre optic technology, Thomas Owusu Mensa. He's passed. Um, actor Chance uh, Ped. Damio, sorry if I'm saying that um, if I'm saying that incorrectly, um, who people uh, I think he's actually British born, right? Yeah. He's a British actor yeah. um, who was recently in Gen V. If you watch The Boys um, in Gen V, which is it's really so recent, he yeah. was very popular. A lot of people on my Instagram mm-hmm. were pouring out their heart. Um, he was he was a member of Identity um, Agency. Oh, was he? Yeah, there's a lot of people on my timeline that I follow that via Identity were really crushed by his mm. untimely past. So motorcycle yeah. rest in peace. A motorcycle yeah. accident, yeah. yeah. Rest in peace. Also music artist and producer Jayvon has also passed as well. And also unfortunately a five year old mm. young boy um who was found in the River Thames. So it's an ongoing investigation I think in terms of what happened to him. But Daniel Al Al Alibi, um he's also passed as well. So sending also all as much love and condolences to everybody, to peace to their yeah. families and yeah also their close friends as well so yeah rest in peace rest in peace rest yeah. in peace to everybody um okay the number two cowboy carter i ain't got no gang but i got shooters and i bang <laughs> <laughs> okay you're just gonna have to love it you're Listen. gonna have to basically cowboy car beyonce's uh act two has arrived and it's amazing and she snatched everybody's edges wigs everything she's i still have done it edges. Seriously. Um, so, guys, quick, just quickly, have you listened to it? What do you think was your vibe? Why are you looking at me? You know, I didn't listen to it. Come I on know, now. At all. I heard clips online. Yeah. I wasn't impressed. At anything. She butchered Jolene. Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, um, cut. You see? <laughs> <laughs> I listened to Jolene all the way through my, my childhood. Jolene, Jolene, all through my ears for years. My mum loves that song. She didn't do it justice. She didn't. I'm oh. sorry. She didn't do what Whitney Houston did with I Will Always Love You. She didn't do it justice. <gasps> oh it's God. not Ca- I can a see the remake steam coming off your head. Calm down. It's a Ooh. reimagining mm. that Miss Dolly I Parton. I imagine which that whoever Miss was Dolly... in the studio that day was asleep. Okay, one well, Literally. So. Hive. <laughs> Spread it's your wings, man. Episode, yo. Come, <laughs> come for her. I hate next week. Come. <laughs> no, she didn't do it justice. I'm I can't. Sorry. I can't lie. I think it was really good. I do. I really do. I think she done her. I, I think she done her best. There was a switch up in the lyrics as well, kind of thing. It was made for modern times. I think she done all right. Like I, 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 I quite like it. I can't say it's my absolute favorite on the album. Um, I think I'm more like I like. It's a bit random, but I like bodyguards. I just like the vibe of it, man. Seriously. Mm. It's very uh, TV commercial, and I, I think it's I think it's great. I think the album is magnificent, mm-hmm. and I will go as far to say at this juncture of it coming out, of it being released, and me listening to it, I prefer it to Renaissance. Uh, My uh, at this juncture is what I'm uh, saying because it took me a while with Renaissance. What I did there, I found like songs that I liked, mm-hmm. and then eventually I like listened to the album as a complete body of work. This one, I have listened to it as a complete body of work multiple times and I absolutely love it. Her vocal on Daughter, when she flips the script and goes into opera, mm-hmm. is just chef's kiss. The song with Miley Cyrus is has me in a chokehold. Yeah. Jolene is an amazing reimagining of a song co-signed by Dolly Parton and Dolly Parton has the only writer's credit on that song, I might add. Just <laughs> yeah. going to throw that out there. Yeah, she's not stupid it's, at all. No, she's not <laughs> stupid, but also Beyonce honours her icons. You know, it's it's. I th- I think the album is fantastic. There are multiple songs in it that I love. I don't yeah. necessarily know all of the names to them at the moment. I like the song with um, the the duet with what's his name, Willie. Some Post Malone. Post Malone. Oh, I Levi. like that. What was the point of that? No, it's a track. Levi's. No, Post Malone. What do you mean? What do you mean? Why did she do a song with Post Malone? 
I mean, because it's a country album. Oh, he's not. Isn't he supposed to be a hip hop artist? Is he country now? I mean, the whole point of her album is that she's saying that she's not going to be pigeonholed into okay, a specific fair. genre. I was going to so ask So if she's not, that. if she's not going to be pigeonholed into a specific genre, she she's saying that art, art okay. is art. She has black people on it. There is. There she has is. black country stars yeah. on it. She has yeah, black good. rappers on. It. She has. That's good. She has a amalgamation of people on it, and it's and, amazing. Sorry to cut you there, but and also the I think that part of the fact is that she's now that they have been on. Her album, their popularity is growing. Some of them have charted for the first time in the country charts as well. Even thing. Dolly Parton's um, streams have gone up as well, kind of thing. Everybody that's touched that album as an artist mm -hmm. has just, you know, do you know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. just been multiplied. Like she's been able to do that in this one album. Yeah. Like not many people can do that. Yeah, only and it's been out for a week. That. Yeah. She was on, um, there's an artist on there by the name of Linda. What's her saying? I can't remember what her name is. Oh, anyway, she's know. a famous country artist, but she yeah. was like one of the first black people to appear on a television program specifically for country. Yes. And she was greeted with a, a lot of racism. Mm. Beyonce's got her on the album. It is, even if you don't like her, if you listen to the album from the start to, to the end, it is a wonderful, amazing, magical, musical delight. It really is. I really feel that. And I don't, I didn't come out and say, oh, Renaissance. I love that album, but it took me a while, in all honesty, to get into it. This takes you on a journey, a vocal journey, an emotional journey. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's, That's my take on it. It's layered as well. And I think like, even like Blackbird, where she's got some of the country artists on that and that being written by the Beatles mm -hmm. and like the meaning of it, that it was like symbolic for the civil rights movement and all that kind of stuff. Like, I feel like, yeah, I feel like she done, she done things, she done levels. I'm levels. Impressed. I am. Yeah. Like I said, I ain't in no gang, but I got shooters <laughs> and I bang. That's what Beyonce That's said to everyone. That is she a very poignant <laughs> lyric, given the current climate. Go on, I say. mean... <laughs> Go on, <Beyonce. laughs> she might have been talking about banging man. She, I know what she was talking about. <laughs> okay, so moving on to number three in our interesting things that have happened this week. Um, so, yeah, actually, sad news again. Oh, my God. Mm. So, sad news is that uh, women's refuge charity, Sister Space, who, um, who I've supported as well do you know what i mean i yeah, love me these too. guys they do really good things it was broken into and vandalized because people are stupid um so yeah guys like if you can only if you can obviously uh, cost of living all that kind of stuff but can you if you can donate to them sisterspace.org that's sister with an a h um yeah just donate they can't to them. catch a break man yeah. Honestly. always sister space first they were trying to hold on to the venue where they was because mm -hmm. Hackney Council was trying to kick them out. Yeah. And they stayed in there. And then the lady got invited to Buckingham Palace yes. where the woman asked her where she's really from. Mm -hmm. And she had to deal with all that bullshit. The carnival thing as well. Like the Hack Is it the Hackney Carnival? What happened at Hackney Carnival? They weren't allowing them to have yeah. a float as oh, well. For God's sake. There's and been that, a, they, a lot they of They can't things. catch a break, Sister Space. And they do such great work. Yeah. They do. They really sad. do. So yeah, very sad. No. So number four, Young T and Bugsy. Don't rush. I'm not gonna <laughs> see what we did there. See what we did. Well, they basically their very popular tune that was out in the pandemic. Like we actually done a video to you. We know? did. We yes, done that much video. Yes. Yeah. Um, it was very cute. Um, they're saying that they didn't make any money from that track, mm. which is insane. What did it go to the producers? I don't know. Well, I don't know. Maybe. Normally it does. Normally. Well. I, I think their producer's doing pretty well from what I've seen. The streams mm. are huge on that song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It went international. It was everywhere. Mm -hmm. Everyone was doing that challenge. If you're a vocal, sometimes this can happen. You can be paid to vocalise a track and you're paid a set rate. Mm -hmm. So you don't, get, you don't get any points on the song. You don't any, get any writer's credits. Mm -hmm. Um, but which is weird because if they're the rappers, they normally would write their own songs. So they don't, if they're not, if they, I, I can't imagine that they didn't get publishing mm. unless somebody wrote their lyrics for them. Which could have been the case. It could have, it could have been the case because nowadays rappers don't write their lyrics, but it's really weird for me to, to believe that they didn't get any publishing. That's so crazy. you just, just came and read, <laughs> stood at the booth and vocalised somebody else's lyrics and then took home like £500 each and that was it. From what I've seen, crazy. I could be wrong, but I think they're talking about their, their contract again. And we hear this time and time mm. again. Mm -hmm. When people are coming into the game, they don't necessarily have the right understanding and they don't know how to read a contract and yeah. they don't know how to go to the correct type of contract mm -hmm. lawyers. And they're just happy to be given a shot. Mm -hmm. So from my understanding, I think there was a little bit of that going on in, in terms of this song anyway. I don't know about the rest wow. of their deal, but 
it is very sad that that was a global amazing song and yeah. they've made they could have bought of houses off of that song that's ridiculous mm. yeah it's really bad um don't rush to sign your contract peeps bro hmm. read the small print read all the print read not even just the small print. print seriously okay so moving on to number five lizzo said Ugh. that she was quitting music then clarified that she's not quitting music she's just quitting negative energy and she says that she's doing this because of all the hate that she receives now, this really got on my nerves. Oh, really? I can't lie. Why? <laughs> because she made such a big blood clot statement, like, I'm quitting, mm -hmm. I've had enough. And she knew that mm. people were automatically gonna, going to assume that she meant she's quitting music. Mm -hmm. That's what everyone thought about. And then she came out and said, no, I'm not quitting the thing that I love. It's either you thought you could quit and your record label said, where are you going? Mm. Something yeah. happened anyway, or it's a PR star. I don't know, but I just didn't really like how she did that. She's got a lot of fans that are dedicated to her. And how did that make them feel? You know, it's yeah. just irresponsible, I think is the word. She's always attention seeking that one. As long as she keeps her booty cheeks underneath her clothes, I don't care what else she does. <laughs> Literally. I mean, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Oh, Seriously. Did you remember? Do you know, do you know what I'm talking about, right? Yes. Yeah, so she... When she went to the basketball game, she had a cut, her booty cheeks cut out. Yeah. And then she sat on the bench with yeah. her bare ass. I mean, that's nasty. Sitting on public and, places. As long as she doesn't do that, I don't care. That's that's that's. The yeah, but don't you say. feel like she gets like extra, like vitriol from people because she's a bigger lady? No, I don't you feel don't. like she gets... You don't? Do you not? I don't feel like she gets it because she's big. I feel like she gets it because she she's an atten she seeks attention. No, I think no. she gets it because she's bigger. Yeah, I, don't I think she gets it because she's. I bigger. definitely think she gets it because she's bigger. Even when she wears certain things, people come for her because it's like you shouldn't be wearing that. She can wear whatever the fuck she wants to wear. She can wear whatever she wants to wear. That's very true. But keep your ass inside. Please. The only thing about that, <laughs> keep the only your thing ass I find inside. Ass the only thing I find nasty about that is that she's in a public... How many people... She, she was in a public place. She was at a basketball game. That's like sitting on a fresh toilet in public. That's what... The, I, yeah. And, that, but, but then when she did that, she said it was because she was big while people were complaining. No, it's because your bare butt cheeks are out of road. Mm. She does um, things and, and, and says it's because she's big. And some of the things she does are just nasty, mad pop. I think two things can be true at the same time. So I feel like, yeah, you can be put off by like the bare butt cheeks on the public uh, seats and stuff. But if she was um, much smaller, do you know what I mean? If she was a dress size, mm -mm. like UK dress size six, mm -mm. eight, ten, I don't think anyone would be saying anything. Kanye West's wife, who's always undressed, everybody complains about her every week because she's not dressed. That's not true. Come I on think, now. I think that Come on Kanye's now. West wife is a very special case. No, and it's I feel like thing. No, no, no. It's, it's, not, it's not complete. I'm not saying that people don't like to see, that people have issues with seeing like mm -hmm. uh, nudity or not even mm -hmm. nudity, not full nudity, but do you know what I mean? Partial nudity and things like that. But like, I do think that at the same time, um, she does. She still gets coverage and space to say that what she's doing, Kanye West's wife, is mm -hmm. fashion. Do you know what I mean? And that yeah. it could be innovative and it could be challenging stereotypes and all these kind of things. Whereas what Lizzo does is seen as an irritation. People don't have time or for Lizzo mm -hmm. at all. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I feel like they don't have patience to understand I've where she's seen... coming from. Okay, I haven't seen anybody give. Kanye West wife that space at all. I, I think so well, the amount of coverage she gets mm, <laughs> I think that I think they're worried about her I, again <laughs> so she's two things can be true at the yeah. same time I, I think they're worried about her because of Kanye and his whole thing that he's got going on and whether she's got autonomy over her body because she's a seemingly being protruded like a um, yeah, everybody's, portrayed like a prop everybody's at acting like what she's doing is abnormal nobody's saying yeah this is artistic everyone's like are you alright love Blink twice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they are saying that to her, but then I think people forget that she was part of his design team. Yeah. Before oh, was they she? Were, I yeah, didn't know that yeah, either. Yeah. She was part of his design team. Yeah. So, you know, for her, this could be high fashion. But going back to Lizzo, mm. I, from my point of view, I think that she does get trolled a lot because of her weight. Mm. The other issue that I feel like everyone's kind of forgetting is all these cases and allegations. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yes. You know, That's are very, you, very true. Are you yes. acting out? 
because yeah. of that is yeah. it a deflection what's happening well have they talked about on? the cases recently they haven't no. you know so basically so just She's a just... quick summary that she was accused by some of her formal former um dancers and employees some sort mm -hmm. that that it was a hostile work environment and there were some kind of like forced behavior yeah like yeah. sexual mm -hmm. acts on a banana i remember correctly oh, allegedly deep allegedly but yes there were some issues with that <laughs> so yeah right. um so yeah i think I, I don't know i don't know if the tide is turning for lizzo i don't know but i do think that there is a lot of phobia out yeah. there i mean has she got an album coming out uh, yeah, where's I the don't music know. no but i just mean like it's interesting that this is all happening is this yeah. a pr stunt Ooh, maybe. maybe 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 okay the music <laughs> here is some <laughs> Um, okay, so number six, Senegal's new president, Basiru Dome, Dom oh no, nah, I'm butchering it. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Apologies, Senegal. <laughs> um Dioman Faye, I think. That guy. Um at 44 becomes the youngest president leader in Africa. Um, which is amazing. I love yeah. it. And he done this amazing speech where he basically said, France, your notice. Get prepare, prepare yourself to leave. Leave the country. Why? He did. Yeah. So France, Senegal is still a French colony? Or are they independent like Jamaica's independent? Yes, but no. I think it's the latter. I think it's the latter. Yeah. Mm. But I think French, the French have a, um, a different type of colonial history, mm. even to Britain. And there yeah. is a lot of payments that are still being made. Yes, like differently. they did to Haiti. Yes. Yeah. Precisely. If you are a French colony or former colony mm -hmm. and you still use French money your own money isn't actually printed in your country mm -hmm. it's printed in France and you have to pay for the privilege yeah so the French have got things wrapped up differently wow so mm. he basically said voulez-vous deuces yeah yeah <laughs> Good so you yeah. got your notice. Yeah, good for him. Avec well no Swiss sauce ce soir. <laughs> <laughs> I do not want you here anymore. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah. so let's hope. Uh, and also, like, honestly, like, protect that man at all costs. At because all costs. We know what these countries exactly. do. If when, history is anything yeah. to sh has anything to show us, anytime there's been a prominent leader in a black country that is making positive moves and doing positive things for their people, mm -hmm. they get taken out. Grenada had Morris Bishop and mm -hmm. they got taken out. They got invaded. Little old Grenada mm -hmm. got invaded by the Americans because Morris Bishop was doing tinks. Mm -mm. Yep. So. Crazy. They didn't take Gaddafi in Libya, didn't they? Yeah. Number seven, music producer Stevie J, who's openly Team Diddy, has challenged 50 Cent to a fight. <laughs> yes, that's what I said. He's challenged 50 Cent to a fight. <laughs> Bizarre, no? Broke. What, oh, it's, it's giving, it's giving mad broke. broke. It's giving Diddy's paying him a little extra money on the side to right. come out and start saying some shit. But what I found hilarious is that the the internets were like, we'd rather see Jocelyn fight him. <laughs> oh, I'll pay to see that. Give him a better and, fight, they, yeah. and they showed clips of Jocelyn beating Stevie J's ass. So should give, should give a better Stevie. fight. <laughs> DB. Okay, so number eight. Um, Oh, the Israeli parliament has approved a law giving the government the power to ban broadcasts of TV channels, including Al Jazeera. Um, yeah, which is a Qatari owned network, which is insane. And also we'll add as well, there's like mm -hmm. allegations at the moment that they've, um, that some aid workers have been targeted, systematically targeted and, um, I don't even know how to say I it. I mean, I don't, know if we're, I don't know if this is, we're getting into this later, but basically what happened was there were aid workers for, for and they're, I can't remember the organisation, but they're WCK. like food kitchen. So they're there to feed Something people like who are starving, mm -hmm. basically. And if you're an aid worker and you're in Gaza and you're doing all these things, you have to liaise with the IDF mm -hmm. yeah. for, to let them know which route you're going to be taking. You have to plan your routes. You have to um, put 
all your logos on your cars. You have to, it's, it's not like you just go to the shop and yeah. you just drive down a street that you want, yeah? Mm-hmm. So these people, the Israeli government are now saying that what happened was a mistake. Mm. That's how they, they said, it, it, it's a tragedy and we are sorry, our condolences to their family and this was a mistake. Now, don't get twisted. They targeted these people three times. Oh. They were in one vehicle, it got bombed. They came out of that vehicle, they went into another vehicle, they took their wounded and they went into a second vehicle. That got bombed. They came out of that vehicle and went into a third vehicle. Mm. That got bombed. And they all died. The only reason why we're hearing about this is because the the nationals were foreign nationals. The aid workers were, you know, there were three people from Britain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was a Canadian-American. There was an Australian and uh, a a guy from Poland as well. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, this is the only reason why we're hearing about it. This is the only reason why the Israelis are coming out and apologising to the families. Because they haven't come out and apologised to the 31 plus people that have died or the 15 plus thousand kids that have died Mm -hmm. you know the the israeli government also say that they have the they're the best army in the world and they have all these tools but yet for all you lot make mistakes all the time how are you making so much mistakes it's not a mistake it's not a mistake Mm. um i read before i came on here i read that um they said that they couldn't make out what car it was from the air so then you just don't bomb it right (laughs) if you don't know what car it is you just don't bomb it right and, and there's been a lot of people like British journalists like Julie Hartley Brewer who's, who have regurgitated. Mm. Um, it's, it's been a, it's a tragic mistake. It's, they said it's a tragic mistake. They've apologised. Um, Hamas wouldn't have apologised. I've seen like four tweets verbatim like that today from certain people in British media. Like they've been paid to tweet this bullshit. Killing aid workers is against international law. Mm-hmm. Like, what the fuck? And the fact that into the world is just allowing this to happen, mm. is I don't understand. I feel like we're living in a game at the moment. It's a simulation, right? Yeah. It's, it's a, a simulation. simulation it because we keep real. hearing the UK government and the American government say, listen, we, we're sending none of them we're sending them money for for their security and we are saddened for the the casualties and we have to get Hamas and get the ter- they get their hostages out. Okay, but now 30,000 people have died. So how much, how many people are Hamas? They keep saying they need one to of, get Hamas. How many Hamas operatives are there in Palestine? One of the, you have got them in four months. One of the other stories about the aid workers, one of the first stories that came out, they tried to say that they thought that there was a Hamas... Yeah, um, yeah that's the first story. ...person amongst the aid workers. Mm. They knew that there were seven people in the vehicle. They thought one of them was Hamas. So you bomb everyone. Exactly. And if it was a mistake the first time round, was it a mistake the second time? How do you know that the person that you're trying to get didn't die the first time round? Mm. You don't know anything. Because what they're failing to recognise is you're setting a precedent, a very, very scary precedent for the rest of the world. All these people that you like to call dictators, you're showing them you lot can do what you want. Well, literally. I mean, they have been. Yeah, they have been. So Cyprus had a boat travelling to Gaza to provide them with aid. Mm-hmm. That was, Cyprus took the initiative to say they're mm-hmm. going to go and do this, right? Following the, the, um, the deaths, the killings of these aid workers, the seven aid workers, Cyprus turned this boat around because they've said it's too dangerous. They have got 240 X amount tons of fucking food for these people, mm. which is now not going to get to these people who are starving because they are now scared for the lives of their people. The majority of aid workers have now pulled back their work in Gaza and Palestine because of this killing. So the pe- the Palestinians are not gonna get any aid now yeah. because of this. And they just, they, they just well, we apologize and that's, that's it. That's by design, isn't it? Of it's, course it is. Exactly. We're gonna yeah, starve you. We can't, we can't expect um, people to have morals or uphold code in the first place because the whole thing is unjust. Yeah from the start mm-hmm. do you know Set what I mean? up that way. so yeah and and also as well i think it's just like yes because we live in the west it's not condemned do you know what i mean but in other parts of the world it is being condemned 100 you know as i, I mean? always say so, terrorism yeah. depends on who's saying the word literally mm. definitely okay take a minute take mm. a breath because that was a lot mm-hmm. Um, going on to something that uh, people beef in between themselves. Uh, Pharrell, number nine, is Pharrell and his business 
um, group partner Chad Hugo are beefing over the Neptune's trademark. Now, I don't know the complete ins and outs, but apparently they used to joint own it and then Pharrell owned it or, or got the ownership, allegedly, I think, without necessarily <laughs> telling Chad. Mm. I think he that's what it is. He did a ditty. I think he did a little bit People of a ditty. People forget about Chad Hugo. Yeah. People forget about Chad Hugo because Pharrell is the celebrity mm -hmm. in the group. Yes. People forget all about Chad Hugo, but he is literally the brains behind that shit, mm -hmm. right? Pharrell is talented, of course. Couldn't have done none of that Neptune shit at the beginning without yeah. Chad Hugo. All that <laughs> skateboard shit. Yeah. Because he called Skateboard P, that all came off the back of what Chad was doing. Mm. He couldn't have done none of anything. So if there's... The fact that there is a dispute is ridiculous because <laughs> that was literally a 50-50 group at the beginning. Yeah. It was a 50-50 group. So, Pharrell, what did you do? For real? For real, <laughs> what did you do? Right. That's why you have to have transparency. What did you do? Literally, and people what did you underestimate do? how important that is. Like, you can't, like, when you're doing group stuff... Because can't do that. Because Pharrell looks young and like innocent and you know like hmm. oh he's <laughs> the ageless the ageless man. Sorry. You know, not innocent. Can not, I not just more. say No but listen He's a vampire. No, he's well, not an ageless man. He's like he's a straight vampire. That man has not aged what's that picture? for thirty years. What's that pro <laughs> John there's a oh I can't I wish I could remember what it is, but there's the guy and he has a portrait of himself and he never ages. Who right. is that? I don't know. John Dur it will come to me. Okay, anyway, there's yeah. a there's a whole mm -hmm. program or a film or a book or something like that about a guy who has this painting and he never ages. Okay. That's Pharrell. Mm -hmm. but, but if the painting goes, he'll age and die. That's Jesus. Pharrell. Okay. Anywho, He's a because he though. looks like that, people assume that he can't do fuckery. Mm. For real, Pharrell can fuckery. Do you know what I mean? He yeah. can. But people forget this. Just remember what Khalees said about Pharrell. I was just go there. <laughs> she has a lot to say about what she is owed and what she didn't mm -hmm. get as a result of his, you know, Bad shady practices. doings. Yeah. Music industry again. Oh my mm. God. Okay. And then number 10 of interesting oh, things that happened this week. Although this one is gross. UK presenter Jonathan Ross revealed that him and his wife only bath once a week. I don't think I can say what I want to say. <laughs> I'm not sure you should. I don't think I can say what I want to say. But, yeah. Did they, um, is, this, is this like a privilege thing? Is this like what... what privilege. They, what, they must itch. Seriously. They must itch. Because... All batty crease itching everything. Like, you don't bathe, bro. No. Do, once a week? Once a week. What do you do? Do you like... How does that work? This is what I don't understand. I know, I, I'm really conscious, like, not conscious, I, I want to know, like, how does that, so you go home, or you, you get, get into up, your bed. No, you get up in the morning, start in the morning, you get uh, up in the morning, Yeah. What do, what's the first thing you do? Is so it not go to the teeth. bathroom? You just yeah, put your clothes on. their teeth. Now they just put their clothes on and then brush their teeth. Do, do they, they, brush, they even brush their do teeth? Do they brush their teeth? So then you have you put on your clean you go into your wardrobe is the clothes clean and you get your fresh clothes I bet they're not fresh out of the wardrobe I bet they're not fresh and you put them on do you put clean underwear on you putting... do you change your underwear do you just wear the same underwear like what do you do I don't I don't know how you're putting putting clean clothes on your dirty you put, body but also no okay <laughs> let me just let me just take this conversation down into the depths of depravity they're a married couple right Oh. So at night time, they don't doogle doogle at oh, night. God. So you better tell me you're not get up and be. Maybe that's the day they do bath. Eh. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Maybe they leave it for Hopefully. that special day. Okay, you should. Apparently, most couples have sex once a week. So, so that's the one day they that's make. That's maybe the one, yeah. <laughs> don't. Yeah. Yeah. It scares me. It's gross. It's really, really it's, gross. Yeah, I, just, I don't understand how you function in the world without bathing your skin. I don't get it. Do you put deodorant on still? Probably. Oh, well, you're going to have to. And then you're working, right? So you're going out into the world. Like, Jonathan Ross is a presenter. So you're interacting Let with other people, you. crew, like your guests and everything. So, and you're like, it's offensive. Can't lie. I, I oh. wish I knew this information in my previous life. Oh, God. Oh, God. I used to work in spaces where he works in spaces, and I wish I knew this I was on TV the other day, and his hair is black. And I know that's not real black hair. So you had time to dye the ting and wash the hair. Maybe that was on his Maybe he doesn't day. wash his hair. That's the thing. <laughs> Maybe that's just dirt. Maybe that's, that's why it stays that's black. That's hiding the, the gray. Okay. It's not washing out. I suppose out. as well, I wonder, why do we need to know? That's what I don't that understand why the they thing. volunteer this information. I think it's like... Um, 
we're so rich we don't have to conform to normal like societal no. expectations i think it's that like we will do what the hell we want because we can you're so rich you're nasty is that yeah, is basically yeah. what you're saying basically yeah mm. I don't like it. Pipes. I don't like it either. I like being broke. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I don't like being broke. But, but you I like, know what I mean? I like being clean. clean. <laughs> I love being clean. No, do you know what? I was seeing one of those types of podcasts where they were still having this yeah. discussion. Mm -hmm. And as far as they're concerned, only broke people had washcloths. I've seen that. You see that? I've only broke seen people that. have washcloths as far as they're concerned. Yeah. This is, but this is what I'm saying. Right. Like, this is what I'm saying. They're yeah. mad. <laughs> no, they're mad. They're, mad. they're sick they're in the mad. head. I remember this because they that? were saying I went to my friend's house and I stayed the night and he gave me a he gave me a, um, a face cloth and he was like, "What is this for?" And the and his friend was like, "It's wash to wash skin. your body." He said, "I mean, why have you got such a small towel?" It's not for that, bruv. It's to wash yourself. They imagine. And he just didn't understand didn't it because he, he just meant. rubs the soap on his body with his hands. <sighs> Gosh, and obviously lets the water so trickle down their legs because they don't yeah. bathe their legs either. Yeah. It was really, yeah, I saw that. Strange. Very strange behaviour. And yeah, as you said, why did we need to know? Yeah, but now sure. we've shared it because we've suffered. <laughs> we're sharing it with you. So we suffer less. Excuse me. So yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So then moving on to enemy of progress, this is where we discuss the people who are holding us back, who we want to kick out of the family reunion. Hmm. We want to revoke their black card. We want to throw them in the bin. And we're going to start with a Diddy update from so, Farah. Take that, take that, take that. Take did that, <laughs> did that, done out, Diddy is back in the news mm -hmm. this week. He's, I feel like he's soft launching. Oh, God. Himself. <laughs> <laughs> so he's been outside. But um, in most recent news, his son is now facing allegations. His son's Christian mm -hmm. Christian Coombs yeah. is now face, facing allegations. And um, a lawyer has come forward and said that my client has, video, has photographic evidence and yeah. it's for sexual assault. He's facing those allegations. Diddy's he's been, been seen out golfing with his daughters. He's been posting his youngest child, you know, and he's a few people are coming forward and actually speaking up for Diddy. Um, is it Slim Fug? Is that mm -hmm, the rapper? Yeah. So Slim Fug came out and he was like, black people just want to see his downfall. These are the people that was, were saying that they were riding okay. for him and Diddy thought that they were riding for him and look at you now, you're, you're preying on the downfall of one of us and I'm here to say no. Wrong is wrong, my G. If you, or Slim Fug, if you're going to be involved with somebody who does fuckery things on the next level, you cannot support that. Allegedly. Allegedly, but there's what? so many people coming out and saying multiple things. At the very least, do what Fat Joe did. Fat Joe came out and said something. He said, I've known the guy for 30 years, but I'm not going to say anything against hmm. the victims. I'm going to pray. That's what he said. Hmm. But even, I mean, he said it with a little bit of a twist. But anyway, the, the point is, just because you know someone in one experience, you don't know fully what they're capable of doing. I just feel like everyone just needs to settle down, see what happens. Hmm and let the case run its course. Stop coming out and putting your hand in the fire for this man because you're gonna get burnt. Trust me, it's too much. Boy, they might not have a choice. <laughs> that was my thing. Mm. I think Stevie J, him, I'm just like, who's on payroll? Who's got too much to lose where they have to be in support? But it's, it's interesting because at the same time, like with Stevie J, it's just like, if he's your character witness, I don't want it. <laughs> like, I'll be like, I don't want that. Slim Fug had a, there was a long 10 year rumour that he had a baby with his cousin. So he's not a character witness either. Allegedly. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. And I do believe that Stevie J, did he set him up with um, Faith? Because Stevie J, on a side note, on a side note, Stevie J gets 30 bags out of Faith every <gasps> month. For real? Imagine. For real. That's not alimony. alimony. He gets it. Alimony. I don't know, I said oh. imagine. Yeah. Imagine. Crazy. He gets thirty thousand dollars child support from one of his eight, seventeen. Who? How many kids he's got? Yeah. He had Faith's paying that child support. Yeah. Yeah. He had he, had, he owed millions, didn't he? Well. Oh. Yeah. 
joker he's a joke man when he was just like oh you know this is the worst thing that's happened since um el chapo um, Sa- saddam hussein Whoa. osama bin laden it's just like sorry sorry sir are you in the military was you there <laughs> <laughs> was you there okay, first hand do you have an eyewitness account of these things and then he's coming for 50 <laughs> and saying 50 is a um an uncle tom mm. and 50 is bringing down the black people no i think you're getting it twisted you need Literally. to look closer to home, bruv. Mm. Yeah, it's cra- crazy, crazy. But uh, Misha Hilton, who is Diddy's fav- um, f- first babe mother and Justin's Christian mother. Justin's mum, yeah. she's come out and she's publicly slammed the um, home, what are they called Homeland Security, yeah. mm-hmm. because of the way that they actually went about their work. <laughs> she said that they were overly aggressive because yeah. mm-hmm. uh, you can see there's now like some footage of inside of the house when they're actually arresting the boys and she's just like we're going to fight this with everything that we have there was no need to do this to these innocent black men if these were people of a different colour your approach would have been, been different and I can't say I, d- I disagree with mm. that I can't say I disagree with that but Diddy's done some fuckery I'm, I'm, sh- I'm struggling with yeah. that because it's just like the crimes that have um, been brought forward, the charges that they're talking about are heinous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you would expect it to be that intense. If you're not going that hard, then you don't think it is what it is. Do you know mm. what I mean? But- so I'm just conflicted. Like I get it from her point of view as a mother of a son. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. You know, her son's been mistreated, but like... <laughs> Let's get everything out in the open and see who's done what and yeah. what everything is and if anything is going to stick. Misa, Misa, remember when your son got that D- DUI a few months? Was it last year when Justin got a DUI? Mm. She had a whole post on her Instagram about the fish rotting from the head mm-hmm. and how the head of the household is supposed to do their due gil- diligence mm-hmm. and not other people take the blame for their crimes. So Misa, you know what's going on. Don't blame the police, my girl. Don't blame the police. Well, she's talking about using the full force that they have available to, to them. To do what? But who's who's got who's the full the force, force? available? But that's my that's point. That's what I'm saying. So that's probably why she's saying what she's saying. The force is the problem. It, it's but why you're force, in... <laughs> it, literally. I don't want to say too much. <laughs> there is rumours... Allegedly. 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 There is rumours that there was, a sh- there was a shooting of somebody in a bathroom. The person did not die. But it was Justin and Diddy that was in the bathroom. Oh, this is this is in Little Rod's um, suit. Yeah. It was yeah. in the suit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So there's, they found guns in the house. Mm. Right. So if you're going to go, if you're going into a house yeah. and you know there's firearms in there and you know and you there's an allegation of one of the people in the house or maybe more than one yeah. firing guns at people, what are you supposed to do? Just yeah. knock on the door and say, excuse me, can we come in? No, they're going to have tactical army Very shit. True. Yeah. You know who's been tactical? Tactically trolling, 50 Cent. <laughs> he is on that is a can- That is a Cancerian man. <laughs> 50 Cent daily from since this news broke has been trolling everybody. So in the paperwork, in some of the, um, the I think it's that, who did you just say? Rod. Little Rod. Yeah. Little Rod. Yeah. In mm-hmm. his paperwork, he names 50 Cent's baby mother um, yes. as being a little sex worker. <laughs> I so mean, he's so rude. every day is coming out and saying, well, the first post, to be fair, he didn't name names. He just had a picture of himself and he said, I didn't know you was a little sex worker. <laughs> you little sex worker. He didn't actually name names. She came out. Mm. No, no. Her name was in, is in there. Yeah, but he yeah. didn't. No, but he said he was going for custody. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? That's not and the chain then, of events. No, no, no. It was. He said he was going for custody. Yeah, but the first post that he did mm. was just a picture of himself, not even naming her. All he said in the post was, I didn't know you were a little sex worker. Yeah, but we're and not then he talking went for about. Cu- and then he went for custody. That was the next thing he done. So I'm not what are you going to do? <laughs> like, I'm not disputing okay. that. We know who he was talking about. We, we know but, who he was talking about. I'm not, yeah. He's been relentless in his trolling. I'm more... <laughs> Amused by his trolling of Stevie J than I am to his mm. babe mother because like that's still the, that's the, the mother, mother of, of your, your child. child. Yeah. yeah, but he don't care. He's got form on that. His first child, he trolled both of them. Yeah, yeah, Marquise. He, I he mean, trolled both of them. The I mean, Marquise the needs to grow up. He does now. Yeah. I mean, bro, what what can you be if that's your dad? Like, do you know what I mean? It's difficult. Mm. Um, You're not wrong. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel, I, I don't know. When 50 said his relationship with children, it's a bit iffy. What I will 
uh, credit him for is just like when he sees an opportunity to go in on someone, oh, he's going to go all the way. Yeah, he's like, going to go all the way. I feel like, does he not have any skeletons? Because his mouth is big. Maybe well, he's got them wrapped up like certain other people. Oh, God, here we go. Hmm. I didn't say a word. I know, but I know. <laughs> but I know it's coming. I didn't say a word. <laughs> Jay, I'm good but, today. But yeah, I feel like, I don't know. 50 must think there's something in it. And I think he's a very spiteful man. Like when it comes to like court cases and legal and he's, mm-hmm. he's top tier when it yeah. comes to most of that. He seems to be ahead of the game. He seems to know what he's doing and he moves it with absolute confidence yes. and certainty. Everybody says he's not the person you want to start with. Yeah. So. Clearly. I'm, I bet Tia Marie's like happy that it's not her turn this yeah. month. <laughs> He's not putting, still owing money. Not that that the one she still money? owes him money. <laughs> See, fifty and um, Cardi, Cardi B, B as well. Cardi B. Yeah, they don't rap. Don't ever owe them play. money. Yeah, they don't, don't play. Don't. Don't. They, they will take you for forever. Life. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't Cardi? She did play. say that, didn't she? Mm. Yeah. 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 <laughs> she did. She did. Okay, so my enemy of progress is the Ghanaian priest who decided, you know, he wanted to marry a 12-year-old, which is absolutely (laughs) insane. Um, So this priest... um, 63 years old he basically yeah done a customary kind of like local ceremony where he was uh yeah he married this child you know um in ghana the minimum age for marriage is 18 um although apparently 19 percent of girls in ghana marry before they're 18 which is still quite wow. high um and it's just you know Oh God, it was just a bit disturbing because there was like this little, there was this video and in this video, the translation of what people were saying to the girl, the young girl was just like, you know, make sure that you're kind of like on your wifely duties and that you're good for your, um, your mm-hmm. husband and like your sex appeal and all these kind of things, which is like deeply, deeply, deeply inappropriate. Now there has to, um, there has been an update, which is uh, that the police in Ghana have actually located the mother and the child and they're in protection at the moment kind of thing um but yeah it's just like these kind of things and like this is obviously like a a, you know story that's come from ghana but this happens all over the world Mm -hmm. do you know what i mean and it just needs to end like this stuff needs to end let children be children agreed i mean they also were saying that she was betrothed to him from a very early age Mm -hmm. six years before and she was six years old that's crazy. From yeah. six years previously. From six years old, yeah. she's being taught, like, she's you're been taught going to, to do this. To go into this role. Yeah. Apparently, the girl is supposed to undergo a second ceremony as well for purification purposes. I mean, how much purer can she be? She's 12. Well, I don't know when that ceremony is supposed to take place. But um, the fact that she's been under it since she was six years old and, she's, and they've literally been... That's literal grooming. Yeah. Mm. They're grooming her for the purposes of this pastor and... Yeah. And how old is he? 63. Oh, what? Mm-hmm. I, I transversed the numbers. I thought it was 50, 36. 63. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. No, thank you. No, thank you. Okay, Farah, who's your enemy of progress? Okay. <clears throat> My enemy of progress, once again, once again, the man who remains in the bin all the time. <laughs> Rishi, not my prime minister, Sunak, or as Shade likes to call him, Richie, because he is a rich bumber clock. Hmm. Anyway, the reason why he's in the bin this in today, in today's episode, is because he wants to pass a new law which criminalizes homelessness. Crazy. So if you're homeless and you're found to be causing a nuisance from being homeless, he wants to give the uh, law enforcers of this magical country that we live in the right to fine and arrest. These criminals, these homeless people. Now, if you remember back in 2018, the Conservatives said that by 2024, they are going to do away with homelessness. They did say that. Who knew this is what they meant? Who knew this is how they were going to do it? Mm. I have questions, Rishi Sunak. Mm. When you find said homeless people on the ground and, you know, who don't have a pot to piss in, literally, how are you going to find them? How are they going to pay the money? And if they don't have the money, what are you going to do with them? Are you going to put them in jail? Because currently there are people, you're saying your jails are overrun and you're not 
putting in jail rapists and paedophiles, they're not going to jail, but you're going to enforce this law of criminality onto homeless people who you <laughs> have caused a problem for in the first place because you've cut back on social housing. Mm -hmm. You've, you know, or there's all these houses that your rich friends have bought as tax relief, but you're not putting any of these homeless people in. Crazy. It's so, just absolutely wild. Like, um, as a person who was homeless once, do you know what I mean? Like, it's just insane to think that the government would even go down this path. And I used to work with Centrepoint as well. So, and they had this, they were actually furious when this campaign came out, if I remember correctly, and, and trying to end it by 2024, because it just is not something that you can really end. Not, yeah. not really like that. Not without the right services, not without the right support up and down the country, not under not without understanding the root cause especially of youth homelessness in the first place obviously this is talking about all homelessness but it's just like what what are you talking he's so out of touch it's just infuriating the thing that pisses me off about this right in 2020 when we had covid lockdown they housed homeless people in hotels mm -hmm. right right now the whole country the, the right wing of the country are complaining that they're spending millions and millions of taxpayers money housing asylum seekers in hotels. Mm. If they processed those asylum seekers quickly, the hotel money could be used for the homeless. Yeah. That's the first thing. Secondly, there's a clause in this dumbass bill, which states that homeless people can be locked up for extreme noise or extreme smell. Imagine. Extreme noise or extreme smell. They can be put, go they can go to jail. So when this man, when the Tory donor said an MP should be shot, they said, oh, let's give him some Christian forgiveness. But if a homeless person stinks, let them go to jail. That's the kind of government that we have. To the jails that are overrun that are at overrun, the moment. Yeah. Overrun and underfunded. Listen. Put them in there is what he's saying. You want to spend money on fucking weapons for wars that have nothing Ugh. to do with your taxpayers who are actually in a crisis at the moment. We've got our medical services unable to eat, unable to actually buy food, going to food banks. And you want to go one step further in, you know, penalising your people of the country who, by the way, he was on, uh, he was on, a, um, he was interviewed this week. Mm. And in the interview for Sky, he said, the British people don't want an election. We want I you out, bro. He said, <laughs> and I quote, I go outside every day and I speak to people and they don't want an election. No. You are unelected. You're our third Literally. unelected <laughs> prime minister. Okay. We want an election, bruv. We need an election. And that's not to say that I want the next best thing who's care not the next best thing start. No. Mm. But we need something else. It is broken. You don't care about the people who are supposed to be your, you know, constituents. You don't give a shit about us. You don't listen to the public. You don't listen to anything we've got to say. We're asking you to pay our doctors and our nurses and our fire um, services and our even police. We're asking you to put funding into that. We're asking you to create more social housing. We're asking you to do that. We're asking you to stop fucking this Rwanda law that you're trying hmm. to pass. We're asking you to do that. You're saying it isn't against human rights. You're doing whatever the fuck you want to do. You're funding, you're giving tax reliefs to the rich whilst you're trying to fuck up the poor even more. You don't listen to us. This is not a democracy. No, we're not, not living in a democracy anymore. And it's clear that we're not because you want to, pe you want to jeopardize people that, that are protesting. <laughs> you're trying to tell us how we should protest. Yeah. And now you want to pass laws that that um, jail people who are homeless because of all of the other things that I have said. I mean, they're going to ship them to Rwanda eventually. That's what's going to happen. You think, yeah, because you know, they have to get back their money for yeah. that Rwanda deal. Yeah, Do you yeah. know that homelessness under the Conservative government has gone up over 100%? Yeah, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. I'm actually not surprised. So they caused the problem mm -hmm. and then criminalised the problem that they caused. Yeah. Yeah, they need to go. Maybe yeah. if you stop, as I said, funding wars. Maybe I call them political influencers. They're not a government. Yeah. Mm. They're not. They're not a government. They should just be on TikTok. Yeah. They should just be on TikTok as a joke right now. That's Seriously. What they are. All they do. Entertainment. Because it's, uh, yeah. And I, I think like, I, I, I think actually it's really grotesque. It's really out of touch. And it's just, he's so... 
like so far from what people need at the moment. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, who is this helping? But this is not helping anyone. Like even even like the the person like Dave in his <laughs> I don't know where he lives, but like white you know, man, man. Yeah, yeah, do you know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. he's not. This is not the, his number it's, one issue. No, yeah. like you're yeah. not even focused on the right thing. Do you know what I mean? It's just a deflection. Yeah, it's it all really is. a deflection. And that um, uh, no one wants to uh, an election. He's that's just a projection. If I've ever heard one. <laughs> You don't, don't want, want an election. election. Like, One of the serious. comments I read was like, do you mean the people in this room? Yeah. <laughs> Literally. Crazy. Who do you talk to? Because yeah. I know if you went outside now, everyone would be telling like, you they want an election. Let's do it today. Seriously. Um, okay, Marianne. Oh. What's your enemy of progress? Okay, this lady's name is Lin Mai. Is that her name? I think she calls the same for Lin Mei. Lin May, Lin Mai, mm -hmm. Lin who gives a fuck. Okay. That's what I call her. Yeah. Okay. Apparently, this young lady, if you don't know, was is a right wing idiot that talks sometimes, but she doesn't get enough. She doesn't get any more opportunities to talk because she used to be ZZ Mills' best friend. And now ZZ Mills has more sense. So she just says things controversially for attention. So this week, she has said... Many West Africans looking down on Caribbean behaviour is cheeky. Have you seen some of your flag bearers and public figures in Britain? No shade, but I wouldn't exactly say. Lonely, Madam Joyce, Ivorian or Lani Good are the beacons of class morality or, mod or modesty. Bitch, who asked you? Who asked her? <sighs> She's half Caribbean, number one. I don't know why she never speaks about the other half of her heritage. She only comes for Caribbean. Claims Caribbeanness. Hmm. When she wants to go against Africans, we don't claim you. That's the first thing. We don't claim her. Zizi don't claim you neither. <laughs> well, Zizi don't claim you no more either, babe. She just seems to be reaching all the time. She just wants. She says the most devices thing that she yeah. can ever say. Like we're we're here. We're cool, you know. I don't need you to speak for me. We're actually cool. I'm cool with the people that you named as well. We're cool. All of them are right yeah. round here. There ain't no Caribbeans round here beefing with Africans, yeah? Not round here. We're all right. So stop talking. I actually researched her, yeah, because I don't follow her, but I went online and I was like, she said some wild things. She'd be saying wild things yeah. all the time. All the time. And it's always for no reason. No reason. Nobody's asked her any questions. She just wants to come out and say something because she's searching for likes. She said, There's one statement that she was talking about... Um, and this is maybe about two or three years ago where she's saying, oh, men that I actually feel like in the day that I should have idolised, they're now on TikTok, TikTok looking for likes, trying to go viral. Bitch, you're trying to go viral with everything that you're saying. Just stop. <laughs> like, seriously, no one wants to hear from you. Or if you're going to talk about race, talk about all the race that you represent. Literally. Yeah? Stop being div diversive and talking about one side. Like, it's not, it doesn't make sense. No one's asking you these questions. It's so sad because she's clearly looking for attention. Go and get a job. I Go mean, and get a job. I, I, I even believe she probably has one. Like, the thing is, I, I wouldn't be surprised, like, if she has four or five phones <laughs> set up, like, do you know what I mean? And just gets, like, a little excited, like, dopamine hit every time yeah. someone likes something Ugh. or reposted something and everything like that. Like, I think she's pretty sad. I think she's, what she's trying to do, this is a very dangerous rhetoric. Like, I think she's playing on people's, like, emotions with these types mm. of things as well in a climate which we don't need this doesn't help us this doesn't bring like any sort of unity her intentions do never never seem to be coming from a positive place it's always divisive it's always pitting one side against another exactly. whether it's like you know do you know what i mean like which part of the world you're from whether it's gender mm -hmm. whether it's do you know what i mean class it's always so freaking divisive and it's just like you should have better things to do with your time. And it's just so embarrassing. It's actually quite sad as well because she has a lot of people that follow her. Mm -hmm. And you're just spouting nonsense with, actually, with no real facts behind it. Right. And there will be people that will go outside and they'll take on board the things that you said and they'll go out there with that energy. And like you said, we're trying to promote unity around exactly. here. Now. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to be against one another. And what you're talking about it's just not right. You and just need even to stop. If, even if there are 
conversations to be had in Britain between the black community, the Caribbean community and the African community. No one is asking that bitch to lead the conversation. This is the thing. Ever. She's not qualified. She's she, never gonna, she, she doesn't have the she range. Not, she don't no have the range. No one's asking her. Is she the face of it? Hell no. Like, <laughs> bro. Like, and the thing is, it's just like, first of all, ain't Lani Zambian. Like, That's not, she doesn't even know what West Africa, Africa is. Like, bro. No like, one's asking her to lead this conversation. And that just makes it worse. Because you're just picking, that. you know why it makes it worse? Because she didn't, have to name anybody. At Literally. All. If she would if she had a point to prove, she didn't have to name anybody. Exactly. Mm. And then you're you're naming people who have a high amount of traction on these platforms. Right. Because you know mm -hmm. it's gonna you're gonna get engagement. Yeah. You're naming someone that isn't even from the area. Oh wait, has you got a blue tick? Oh, yeah, she's got blue tick. Got blue, yeah. yeah, so yeah. the more engagement she gets, the more money she gets paid off for that blue yeah. tick. Easier. That's it. Just ignore her. I hate people who do that. Just like, ignore just her. Sell out their Create whole culture. between the black community in Britain just so that you can get a little bit of money. Sell out, motherfucker. Be able to yeah, see. just... Yeah. I don't think... It. And also, yeah, it's just... What, what kind of got to me was just, like, the whole looking down. And it's just, like, you've made this. You've put West Africans as a mm -hmm, whole mm -hmm. and you've made it, like, into such a negative. Mm -hmm. Like, who says that any, your average West African is looking down? Like, who says, who says that? that? You. <laughs> you're the only Seriously. person that yeah. says that. Yeah. So yeah. Ignore that bitch. Honestly. <laughs> um, so yeah, talking about controversial characters. Oh my gosh. So I was just scrolling on TikTok the other day. As you do. As you, As do. you do. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> my favourite place. <laughs> and I came across an interview, yeah, by this girl, this young girl, Tamelo. And um, uh, What's her name? Mide Oni, right? Um, and Mide caught my attention because I have a niece called Mide. Hey, Mide, I hope you're well. Um, and um, yeah, so I was just like, oh, what's this, right? And the more I was watching the interview, I was just like, what pepper is happening? <laughs> what is going on? I didn't understand it. And then I went digging and I went down a frigging rabbit hole <laughs> and it was crazy. So Tamela was on this interview because she, this is a girl, 18 year old girl. Mm -hmm. She's a rapper. I think she's from Bristol. Um, and she basically was saying that, um, embrace yourselves. Mm. She was saying that a, a, a young gentleman called Malachi had uh, tossed her salad, Ooh -wee. essentially. Ooh. Yeah. Listen. And she was calling him out and shaming him, essentially, for tossing her salad. Said salad <laughs> was tossed. <laughs> and she was saying that basically that he, you know, he done these things and, you know, he can't say anything to her and blah, 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 because he's done this. Do you know Why what I mean? Why do you need to know this? Well... Young people tend to air out their business on social media. This seems what I don't think there's any rhyme or reason behind it. Mm -hmm. So she was getting she, because of this, she went viral, right? So she was on Midday's uh, platform to talk about the virality, this viral moment, and everything like that. But oh my god. Oh my God. Like, I don't know how the conversation broke down. I don't know what at what point it broke down, but Tamelo was just spitting fire. She came for Midday's age. She <laughs> was just like, oh, you look about 48. These times now, I swear Midday's like in her 30s. I think so. Like, do you know what I mean? 48. Like, do you know what? Yeah. <laughs> do you know what? Yeah. I felt, I think. Are you getting hot? I am getting a bit I'm about hot. To say, she's getting, she's starting to because move. <laughs> I was just like, rah. The way Midday took that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that took, it, took did, it to heart. Took it to heart. <laughs> she, she was triggered. She took it to heart. Ooh. And then, you know, she was saying things like, oh, your shoes, look at your shoes. Your shoes look like Clark's. Why didn't you even buckle the other shoe? I was looking at the shoes. I'm thinking, no, but they're both buckled. Are oh, you just, are said, you just saying? She said, she said, it's giving senior. I'm it's sorry, I nearly fell on the floor. <laughs> oh my God. She said something about, oh, you know, when you're, um, she said something, oh, I think Mide was saying like, oh, you know, like, you know, obviously I'm a lot older than you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. She was like, yeah, I'm 18. Well, what was you doing when you was 18? Was you getting fucked out behind, behind the, the bins? bins? Sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, what? <laughs> Excuse me? Sorry, oh, wow. when, when did that become a Oi. standard Bro. retort? Like, 
we're talking about age difference. You're talking about me getting fucked up behind, which t- I am <laughs> sure I will probably, I'm not a betting person, but I could put money on it. I don't think Mede had done that. I, mean, I don't think that she had. She didn't say she did. <laughs> she, but she, she had to take speechless. a minute. She yeah. was speechless. She had to take a minute because, but wouldn't you be, if someone's coming at you with that kind of fire, it was just like Do you know why insane. I wouldn't be? Why? Because she's 18. She's a flipping child. I mean, she is. She's a, a kid. And to be honest with you, when you invite foolishness onto your platform, expect a foolish outcome. Oh. Fair. Number one, Everybody who's got a child named Malachi, I know they call that you <laughs> into the room like, Malachi, <laughs> ring the bell. <laughs> you understand? Eating bum Is bum. this girl talking about you? <laughs> I've got a friend with a son named Malachi. I did think of him, but he's abroad, so it's not him. <laughs> Anybody that's got a child named Malachi is pissed. Trust me. That's the first thing. Secondly, why are we, what, what do we want to know? What was the interview for? What insight was we going to get? What information was we going to get? How was it going to enlighten the public? We don't care. She already said everything she had to say on her platform. She said more, though, because she was saying that she regularly gets rappers. Paying she named her. the rappers? She didn't ma- name. That was she the only point. She said that they pay her to eat her, <laughs> to toss her salads. <laughs> she no, she she did. Unless she did. you're gonna get the names of the rappers, that was an unnecessary interview. And mm. lovely midday, you made yourself look stupid because she is 18 years old. Conduct yourself better than that. How are you gonna let a picnic rattle you like that? A picnic that is talking about people yamming her ass. How are you gonna let for her money. rattle you for money? For money. How are you gonna let her rattle you like that? She walked out. She got so mad. She walked out. She did. And the thing is, yeah. And I've I've been thinking about this because like a lot of people said that Midday's tone. They didn't like Midday's tone. No, she was. They didn't rude. like that she was, she was condescending. Um, they didn't like her judgment in mm. in it in it and everything like that. I um I can't like I'm conflicted, yeah, mm. because um and none of us are trained presenters, mm-hmm. right? Do you know what I mean? Like I feel like especially when you're kind of early in your career. I don't know how far midday is, but that kind of thing. Something like that could fucking throw me. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It could absolutely throw me. And I have to cho- choose between my inside voice and, <laughs> and my outside, outside voice. voice. <laughs> Which one am I going to use? And also how far am I going to take it? Yeah. Because I mean, I don't know midday, but like I, I know me. Yeah. And there ain't no way. Yeah. And not even a child, anybody is going to be disrespecting me. In that kind of way, they, I mean, they can try, they can try. Don't but invite like, disrespect onto your platform. You know what? <laughs> I'm conflicted because I will say this mm-hmm. if we had the little girl on yes. this podcast and she started to run her mouth, my outside voice is going to come out. Do you, but yeah. my outside voice is going to be wrapped in mm. my inside voice, in mm. professionalism. Because the way that I'm going to run her, she's going to feel like she needs to go outside exactly. and sell more batty. Mm-hmm. Because... Oh, not sell more. Who we don't the fuck are you talking to? You think that because you're 18, I'm jealous of you. Because that's, that, that's what that, she was that trying was, to that say. Was the that, was, that, was, that was the crux yeah. of it, you know. And it, and it didn't land well. And it didn't so land it well. It didn't land well. But I think yeah. it didn't land well because... She was triggered, right? She, it, it, she, it, seemed it, it seemed like it, it triggered seemed like her. Like, yeah. If you're going to say that to me, I'm going to be like, babe. It's not going to trigger me. No. For all no. the money in the world, I wouldn't want to be 18 again. Mm. And not because I was getting fuck out around the back of the bike shed, because I, I actually don't know that life. That sounds like your story. Mm-hmm. I actually don't know that life. But because 18, nine ain't guanin' mm. for you. You think that, you know, things are happening. All you've got on your side is youth. You don't have maturity. You don't have actual knowledge of life experience. You don't have that. It is a beautiful thing to age and to grow and develop. You're going to get there. But right now, this ain't it. If all you've got going for you is your youth, your youth is fleeting. You need to plan better. Now, you see, if she had come at her with that type of maturity, instead of talking down to her, then but she might on. have got a different side of the I understand girl. that, but she if might, the little girl... she was condescending from the start. Mm. She was condescending. 
then the reason why I said I'm conflicted <laughs> is because I've seen her. What's her name again? Tamello. I've seen her on another pod giving smoke. So maybe karma came to bite you in the bum. Oh, maybe. you mean midday? Midday yes, is the, pre- the presenter. Yeah, oh, midday. She saw her in another. I've seen her yeah. in another podcast. Doing the same shit. Giving no. Well, well, she was a guest. <laughs> On what's the podcast called again? <coughs> Hold on. There you go. She was a guest on a podcast, yeah? Ah, and she was giving now. a bit of smoke. And she, I feel she, like possibly she what was happened giving to her... Bike, she, she was giving a bit of pepper. She, she was she, giving a bit of pepper. She, she really was. Wise Monkeys, Lou. that's it. She was on the Wise Monkey Media podcast. What was she being interviewed about? She, mm. so I, I feel like it's she went viral for something. Yeah. And they had her on there. I can't remember I really can't what remember. it was. But the female presenter um, the, mm-hmm. on that platform, they had a bit of a back and forth. Yeah. And it didn't go very nicely. And she got up and she walked away. Not the female presenter. Midday. Midday. Got oh, up so, and walked oh, away. And she yeah. walked away again. So I feel like maybe <laughs> she's got form. She has. Yeah? Yeah, clearly. But I can understand also why you would be triggered. The professional side of her was probably like, I'm not going to respond to you because that's not professional. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take a minute. Maybe she thought that would get edited out. Mm. Oh my God, did, you see, done. did you see the last clip though mm-hmm. when the little 18 year old girl was like I'm not going to let you finish she was trying to wrap yeah. up yeah. and she like, I'm going to interrupt it's my show. you it's yeah. going to have to do this show now. Yeah. Like, right back now it's my show you but, need clout of me yeah. etc I just feel stuff. like it's the lack of manners for me it's the lack of manners and respect I don't understand the thing is I don't get you know it. what I you get I, expecting I, manners from someone who gets their ass eat and tells everybody you yeah. no, do manners? you know what? To be fair, like do, if you're old enough and it's consensual, you do what you're doing sexually. If that's yeah. if that's yeah, what yeah, you want to yeah. do mm. and you're informed, I don't think at 18 you should be getting paid for it though. Of course, I actually don't. I can't. I can never encourage that at all, ever. Like I think you need to. I, I think you need safeguarding. I think you need mm. support. I think you actually need some sort of therapy. I hope you've got good people around you. I hope you understand that this whole kind of like going viral and um, and and uh, you know getting likes and all this kind of stuff. That this is it is as you said as it's, well it's mm. fleeting it's do you know what I mean it's, it's not necessarily made of substance like and when you're by yourself you're going to have to deal with you you're actually going to have to deal with you so you have to make sure that you like you hmm. and I hope that is the case and you know what I, I think if she was on our show and I was talking to her I would again like I said before I'd tell her about planning better yeah. because those are the things that I wish I knew when I was 18 Yeah, I wish I knew more about financial management number one yeah, yeah. because that's what's going to guide you later on in life your youth is fleeting your youth ain't going to hmm. pay you forever but then also as well, it's just like, you know, the, the kind of make, just being safe mm-hmm. as well, making sure you're not being exploited yeah. by the people that you're seeing. Like, do you know what I mean? And also like that you're making good choices. Yeah. Do you right? think Malachi's real? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm actually not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. I, I'm just like, yeah, I, I was just so perplexed by the whole thing. There were moments that were definitely entertaining for sure. Mm-hmm. But I just thought, yeah, I'm not sure. I think like I probably would have came at it from a presenter point of view yeah. with more yeah. compassion, like in terms of like, I think so. you know what, hun, you're young mm-hmm. and you're, you're a young girl. Like what is going on? What that why goals? why you're here? Do you know what I mean? Not what you're doing is disgusting. Yeah, exactly. Do you know they what I mean? I heard differently. That's what I mean. Like, yeah. like you said, you can do whatever you want in the bedroom, but it's I, I feel like those are the points that should have been addressed. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's why I think I'm conflicted. Yeah, I don't like the 18 year old's response. No. I don't like that because no. I do feel like you need to respect your elders, but maybe that's a very old age thing for me to I think. I mean, it's a cultural thing as well. Like, see, yeah. see yourself. She but these are the things herself. I don't I would never expect her to respect me she doesn't respect herself mm. I don't know yeah I don't know I don't, I don't know her life do you it's know what I mean about the things that I don't you said. know yeah Safe I don't know garden. what she's been taught to respect this what herself she, this is, this do you know what I mean it. well she's eat, she's she's yeah. talking about <laughs> her sexual activities online so if I look at somebody like that at the age of 18 clearly she has no one around her because mm-hmm. you, you would never yeah you would never if you're worried about what your mum thinks, your parents thinks, your aunts, your cousins, your uncles, yeah. you would never do it. So clearly she has a lack of um, a moral compass and like a lack of family support mm. around her. That's the first thing. So I would never expect her to come onto my platform and know how to conduct herself because clearly she doesn't. Mm. In any yeah, way, you're right. Yeah. yeah. That is I probably agree. why though yeah. the approach of questioning should have been a bit should different. Have been yeah. a you say you want to be a rapper. 
Let's talk like let's that's, talk that's about in the that. past. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's what you did let's in the get past. To another side of her. What do you want to do now? Exactly. Yeah. You know, let's focus on something else. Try Maybe have that kind of line of questioning. Nasty point in the first place. Yeah. Don't tell her she's disgusting. She knows she's disgusting. Yeah. She's not she's not doing it thinking it was she didn't go online and tell everybody thinking it was gonna say, Yeah, that's great. She knows it's disgusting. The other side of it is like none of this might not be true. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, might it. it might just be for attention. Which is like kind of like the Mizzy route, which mm, I don't mm. respect either, to be honest. Like, yeah, but do you know what I mean? At that I understand age, it, but at that age when they're looking for attention in that way, you have to look behind and what is going yes. on. Yes. Yeah. What is going on that they're coming out, they're looking for attention like that. Where are they not receiving attention? Yes, exactly. Mizzy, when I heard his mother. Mm. I was like, okay, well, there's the problem right there. Okay. Mm. She said, oh, he just needs to go and look a job. Babe, you're his mum. Mm. You're his mum. What do you mean he needs to go look a job? Isn't it your... He's 18. Isn't it your job to make sure he goes down that... Yeah. Thing? In the first place, wasn't that your job? So I could already see how we got to that point. Yeah. And that is the conversation that maybe should have been had with her rather than that you're disgusting. Did she say to her she's disgusting? I she, don't think so. Okay. I don't well, think it was that, she, but it was not, like but the, she just, the underlining was, it was tone. The tone. It was a tone of the, the underlining because tone. Because let's be honest, this mm. is what I will say. If that young lady, the little girl, came on our podcast, I think that we would definitely greet her in a different in a different way. It would have been yeah. it'd, be, it'd, be, it'd be more of like a guiding yeah, sort of thing. Been a completely but then if she came with smoke, I feel like the, the, smoke <laughs> the outside, be, inside voice. This is what I'm saying. Like I can't, I can't, I cannot sit here and pretend <laughs> <laughs> that I don't have the capability <laughs> of shutting that shit down very quickly. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I, I just couldn't do that because it's just like, bro, you, you, you are younger than my nieces and nephews. Please, 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 relax. Me. <laughs> like, I Pick can't settle down. But yeah, relax. anyway, midday and Tamela, they did do a live. They made up on the live, apparently. Mm -hmm. So see, everything seems to be all good between them. But the focus again was her age. Yes, it was. Chill out, girl. And I feel mm. like, yeah, I don't know. It's so, it's, it's funny to me. Maybe at fair, in my 30s, I would have been like, oh, do you know what I mean? But now I'm in my 40s. I'm just like, yeah, like literally you're going to age, babe. You're going to age <laughs> and hopefully you'll age as well. Yeah. It's a blessing to age. And that's the thing. And it's just like, yeah, hmm. can't, not everyone is <coughs> jealous of youth, honestly. Trust literally. me. I can not pay me to be 18 again. Mm -hmm. No way. No thanks. Okay, Mariam. Okay, we have, um, there's a racist French spa. Um, it's been called out by Nella Rose and others. Um, because of an incident about, a, I think it was a burkini, right? Mm. I think mm -hmm. it was a burkini. So Topical's the brand, black owned brand, went on a brand trip with black and brown influencers to France. It was the QC Thème Chamonix okay. Spa. Mm -hmm. Okay. And two of the group attempted to use the pool in their burkinis. Now, I know France did run a law banning those mm -hmm. a few years back. Okay. So this, maybe some due diligence should have been done before okay. you book the trip. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so then the security guard wouldn't allow them to use the pool and said to them, listen, there's bikinis in the shop, go in the bikinis and <laughs> buy a bikini, but you're not wearing that. And that is so outrageous to me because they're fully covered. What? Yeah. Outrageous. Yeah, literally. It's crazy. You're not wearing that. We've got bikinis in the shop. Go in the shop and get a bikini. So Nella Rose um, had, did a video about it. And basically what they did was um, they complained. Um, the security people were not having it at all. So they said, listen, let's get our content and be out. We're leaving. We're not mm. staying here. So the Topicals brand, I f even though I feel like they should have done some due diligence, due diligence they handled it quite well mm. because like we're leaving we're not staying here yeah. dealing with this bullshit but it was really um disheartening to know that something like this is still happening in 2024 apparently they were going to call the police to get these ladies out because they were wearing burkinis it's crazy <laughs> it's just so wild to me that they want to call the police for that on them for wearing clothes <laughs> it's so backwards yeah it's you're you're wearing clothes outrageous and they're telling them go and put on a bikini take off your clothes take bikini. off your clothes or we're gonna call the police that's the maddest thing i've ever heard in my life mm. take off your clothes or we're gonna call the police yeah it doesn't even make any sense yeah how can but you we, that? when we're doing these brand trips we literally have to do our due diligence mm. i can't say that word no you're doing all right you're doing okay good. yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
and make sure that these things are not going to happen. You're yeah. going to have to check. I'm glad that everybody named the spa mm -hmm. yeah. and came out and said where it where it is. And I'm glad that Nella Rose used their platform to call it out as well. Because mm -hmm. she said she speaks fluent French and she tried to speak to them and find out what was going on. And it was literally, it was the bikini. They didn't yeah. want him to wear. Yeah, France did have something yeah, like they that. Had I, know, I knew it was on beaches. I didn't realise that it was in That's spas what, and stuff um, like That's some, what some people were saying. They, they thought it was just on beaches. Yeah. They mm -hmm. didn't realise it was in a bloody spa. Because I remember at ridiculous. the time, the outrage was if you had a bunch of nuns on the beach, mm -hmm. are you going to tell them to take their clothes exactly. off? Exactly. Because it's the, the, literally the same type of thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, so. Out of order. But France Topical stuff form, though. like Sorry. handled it really, really mm. well. They mm -hmm. left immediately. Um, yeah. And, yeah. They left it. They got everybody out there. They left immediately. I hope they got their money back. I hope so too. Because <laughs> they were staying there for a few more days, weren't they? Yeah. So I think that I think as a brand, they definitely have um, because a lot must have gone into planning it. So yeah. To just leave yeah. abruptly, find somewhere else to house all those people. Yeah, they handled it really, really well. So good luck. To, good luck to them. And this is the thing. Like, yeah, I, I agree. I think like we underestimate or pe other people outside our culture don't understand mm -hmm. that actually like we can't just rock up anywhere Lit do you know what i mean like we have to think before <laughs> traveling we have to think do they like black people literally do they like brown so true. people you yeah. gotta google the rest the, um, the restaurant you gotta google the hotel to see mm. if there's been mm -hmm. any racist incidents before you go in there and give them your money yeah, yeah. like i like paris yeah but they're fucking racist. Listen, you know, <laughs> and it's real. Like I, yeah. I, I like to go to Paris when I go there. I'm always like, oh, actually, yeah, I really like it. Mm -hmm. And it hasn't taken long to get there. But I guarantee you, I have an incident when I'm over there. Every single time. It happens. Every it really time. does. Yeah. Crazy. Okay, guys, now we're going to get into Welcome to the Family. This is where we celebrate people, shine a spotlight and, you know, just give people their flowers uh, while they um, So yeah, I am actually gonna start and um, we're welcoming to the family some of the iHeart Award winners, which happened this week. First of all, of course, Beyonce. <laughs> Because Queen. you know again, yeah. Well, you know, yeah. <laughs> she lives here. We told you that last week. Again? She has her own section. Mm -hmm. um, You're lucky she's not on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that would be funny. She basically won the Innovator Award, and this was uh, given to her by Stevie Wonder, which is really mm. amazing. And in her speech, she kind of like talks about thanks like different icons that have come before her, um, people like Tracy Chapman, Andre uh, Chap. Chapman? Chapman. I Chapman. Did I say that wrong? No. No? Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> Andre 3000, um, Michael Jackson, of course, Prince, Tina Turner, and all the other innovators as well. And, you know, she talked about, you know, how, you know, criticisms that she's got in the past, like, really help her test your her mental strength, mm -hmm. et cetera, and stuff like that. Also, we had wins from SZA. She won Best R&B. She won um, Best R&B Artist, Best R&B Song for Snooze and best R&B album for SOS which I freaking love Scissors also coming to Hyde Park you know and I'm just like mm, I, I saw that yeah. yeah it looks good it looks good um, and TLC also won as well they won um, the Landmark Award and this is actually they had Lotto perform <laughs> uh, Left Eyes part of I Waterfalls. mean she's light skin and her Name begins with an L. I don't see the other correlation, <laughs> to be honest. Was that what it was? I don't know. Like, what was because the point? I, I was just like, why? Well, why? why? Upset me. They should have. They should have just got a hundred. Just let her vocals. Just let her vocals run in the background. They could have yeah, done. Or... They could have done what um, <coughs> Quavo and. Um, Offset did. did with takeoff. With takeoff, yeah. they could have done that. They could have had like a big montage in the yeah, background. Yeah, literally, just let her and just play work. his music, and yeah. they have a moment amongst themselves. Yeah. They could have done that. I don't feel that they needed to replace Lisa Left Eye Lopez at all. At all. Weird flex. Yeah. Um, and then also Burner Boy, he won Best Afro Beats Artist, which is quite funny because there's so many people saying they don't want to be Afro Beats anymore. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But anyway. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, okay, Marianne, who are you welcome to the family? Okay. I'm going to have to be a little bit of a hater. Um, welcome, look at Shade's mouth. Oh, look at Shade's <laughs> mouth. God. So welcome to the family on behalf of your aunties could never. <laughs> <laughs> Mo the comedian. Mm -hmm. Apparently this is an American takeover. He was on Jimmy Kimmel. Yes. Yeah. Um, is he launching something? He's, he's doing, doing a, a tour. Yeah. He's doing a Sold tour in America. Tour. Yeah. Sold out tour in America. He went all the way to America. Now, Mo the comedian for me. <laughs> also, Fallon, not Kimmel. 
Oh, is it? Oh, is it Fallon? Is it Jimmy sorry. Fallon? I'm yeah. sorry. I really. I put. I mean, oh, did you? Oh, I didn't. Sorry. I like. I like Fallon. I, I mean, I'm same. not massive. To me, they're, they're the, the same, same person. They're the same. I've yeah. heard this, but they yeah. are different. Jim, so, <laughs> my other comedian. I'm not the biggest fan because I find his brand of comedy to be very lazy and stereotypical. And in <laughs> similar fashion, the clip that I saw on Jimmy Fallon's Fallon. show. Yeah. So you're in America launching your tour and there are literally 50 million jokes you could tell about America. Yeah. The president, the healthcare, the, there's loads. What does he tell a joke about? What does he tell a joke about? Jerk Caribbean takeaways. <laughs> That's how you launched your tour. You told a Caribbean takeaway. I feel, I feel like this is the wrong section. Well, <laughs> I might have to cut. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He yeah. went a bit. It gets worse. He went. Like, it gets worse. No, no, not worse. I saw that. No, not like, worse. Because he's he entered Bogolin. <laughs> oh no, he didn't. No, he did not. He's a Caribbean. He's a Caribbean. He's a clown. Oh, no, I you're in you America. Know? Behave yourself, bro. No, 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 no. he's a clown. He you have to be in okay, America. Okay, okay. He entered yeah. bogling. Mm -hmm. When did the bogle dance come out? We bogle to bop the like button. When did the when, was what, he born? Does it, does it? I mean, yes, yes, he was. Or like well, he is siblings. No, he was born. Was stuff. he born? Parents. He was yeah. born. Yeah, he, he was loves born. all that. He loves all that. But okay, no. Okay, f focus on the positive. Find me one. Okay, oh. so for me, <laughs> yes. like I've watched most trajectory yeah. and I feel like he's doing amazing things. Mm -hmm. Whether or not you've, his comedy is for you, you cannot disagree that his, his rise to stardom yeah. has been great. And the reason why he was on Jimmy Fallon is because Jimmy Fallon has a show um, and it's called, uh, I can't remember what it's called. Don't anyway, Jim, Jimmy Fallon's got a show, uh, game show mm -hmm. and Mo does the English version of that show. Mm -hmm. so it's they like have celebrity squares. N no, it's no. more like they go on and they do different voices and they do games and stuff okay. like that. It's actually a pretty cool show. Yeah. And they have like different famous people on there. Mel, not Mel, but, um, Alicia Dixon has been on the version with Mo. Okay. But it's a really, really cool show. Um, so they've got history and I just really liked it that it was like a handover or an introduction to America oh, on one cool. of the massive platforms because Jimmy Fallon's show is amazing and I really find his comedy great. And it was just a nice moment. So for me, I thought it was really nice and I, you know, I thought, the fact that he sold out in America is great. The, you know, let's not forget he took over the O2 and it was called the Mo2. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've worked in spaces with him and he's been a decent guy. He reminds so, me of Kevin Hart. They're okay. just not funny. Neither one of them. Oh, wow. A very famous, very successful, sold out shows. Not fucking funny. Do you know what I'm going to say well to done. that? Well done, mother comedian. Well done to you. Okay. I'm going to say Welcome pineapples. to the family. <laughs> I, I think I think I think that Mo's funny. I like his comedy, and I'm happy that he's doing well. Me too. Me three. <laughs> Lies. <laughs> Farah. I'm sorry, lady. <laughs> she <laughs> couldn't bear it. <laughs> she had to keep it real. Oh my god. Um, okay. Sorry, I put sweet in my mouth. So I'm gonna welcome to the family mm. Brandon Scott who's the mayor of Baltimore. Mm -hmm. He's the youngest mayor of Baltimore. And the reason why I'm welcoming him is not only because of the fact that he's the youngest um, mayor ever in, in that huge city, because recently, tragically, one of the bridges, one of the main bridges that connects the city caved in after um, a boat hit it. Mm -hmm. It just like folded and people died and he was being interviewed live and they were saying stuff to him like, when are you gonna rebuild the bridge? And this is why they're still searching. Jesus. So his response was, let's focus on the families. You know, he was, he, was, he was there on the ground as soon as it happened. Not one of these guys that are just trying to find out what's going on and comes days later. Mm -hmm. So he was being praised for his response anyway by most people. Mm -hmm. But then obviously the racist came out because if I didn't mention it, he's a black guy. Mm -hmm. The racist came out and they just went one short of calling him the N-word they moved around it and they used different mm. words. What was it they said? Because you... DNI. That's it. They called him the DNI mayor. And if you, if you don't know, in the US at the moment, it seems like they're trying to defund all of the DNI diversity um, and inclusion programs um, across yeah. the country. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's kind of like... Oh, that's You're crazy. only here yeah. because of diversity, not in any of his, you know, skills accolades or, and skills. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And the fact that people voted for him. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I'd like to welcome him to the family because he's out there doing what 
our politicians should be doing in this country. Do you know what yeah. was weird about that? That man was out there two o'clock in the morning talking about the families and the rescue and they complained about his jacket. Hmm? They said he was wearing like yeah. a baseball jacket. He was. What do you want that man to wear at two o'clock in the morning? They complained about he was his unprofessional attire. He was oh, wearing okay, a baseball jacket. Seriously. He was wearing this a is, baseball is... jacket, stood next to the fire chiefs who were wearing similar attire. Literally. They this, complained about his keys jacket. This is what they used to do to Obama. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, literally. Yeah, like, literally. oh my God, he's walking there. He didn't salute the people and then mm -hmm. Trump done the same thing. Oh, they just don't even mention it. <laughs> don't the, mention it, don't care. <laughs> you know what I mean? Nutters. Ridiculous. Okay, guys, that was Welcome to the Family. Um, now we're going to move on to our dilemmas. Ooh, and we've got some there. juicy dilemmas. I'm not <coughs> actually going to do... Let's skip the social one because we're running out of time. Okay, cool. Um, okay, I'm going to start with number one. Okay, guys, give, give me a second because I'm a dyslexic. I need it bigger. What? <laughs> one second. Okay. Am I the arsehole for telling my friend her kid has no manners? bro the other day my wife and i invite invited friends over for a get together lunch a few of them have kids so bought them too one of her friends bought her four-year-old son who is notoriously naughty he was sleeping when she came so we told her just let him sleep in the guest bedroom while she joined the rest of us about 40 minutes later he comes downstairs with my wife's wedding ring in his hand what <laughs> my wife's a doctor so he doesn't wear her ring and leaves it on the bedside table so clearly this kid went into our bedroom after asking him to give it back and thinking um him thinking it's just a game and running around with the ring i told my friend to tell her son to give back the ring fair yeah right she brushed it off saying he'll get bored soon and i should just chill out I tried to chill out, but <laughs> thought enough's enough and asked him to give the ring back. He decided to run with it into the garden and throw it. I got mad. My wife was upset, but tried to contain herself. The ring had a special meaning. It was a uh, custom and I got it to look like a ring her grandma always wore. I told my friend she needs to control her son or get him help because he has no manners. She got upset, left, and some of the guests left too. I, in the group chat, I've been accused of being too harsh. FYI, we still can't find Yo. the ring. Am I the asshole or do I need to apologise? You do not need to apologise. Your friend needs to apologise for her picnic because, nah, I'm sorry. Okay. He's a little five-year-old boy. Five-year-old boys are rambunctious, as they like to say, mm -hmm. whatever the word is, right? So he went into your bedroom. He took the ring. Okay, cool. Joke's a joke, innit? Give me the ring back. At that point, if he hasn't given it to you, it is down to the parent to say to the child, enough is enough. Give me auntie mm -hmm. or uncle or whoever's ring it is. Mm -hmm. Give it to me. At that point, it's for the parent to parent. Not yeah. to say, oh, it, oh leave him He'll alone. He'll get bored. He'll get bored. It's someone's wedding ring. And I don't even care what it is. It's not their property. You have to teach children mm -hmm. when they're going to spaces to be respectful of where they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This reminds <laughs> me of a, sto of a story. Um, in my old house, I used to live um, on the ground floor and I had like a little yard with a gate and like a little shared garden. And there was a little boy, we're going to call him Julian. Um, <laughs> and Julian was probably about three or four, something like that. And I had a party for my daughter one year and Julian made his way into the house. Just uninvited. <laughs> so there was one occasion last year where I'm outside in the front yard and I can see Julian running through. Julian manages to run through to my house, into my front room, jumped on my chairs, what? stepped to my daughter's food and then was running around in his house. Julian's mum came and said to me, oh, you might want to close the gate. <laughs> it's down I'm to sorry. the parent that to parent the child. Mm. That is it's hilarious. not down to me to close the gate. It's down to you to mind your you, really and truly, isn't it? So no, you're not the asshole. Your brethren's the asshole. The people that left with her are the assholes. And I, yeah, and send her a check. So it's not a check. Send her an invoice. Yeah, that's what you For need to do. For the wedding ring. Yeah, send her an invoice. People are too patient because you see, if you're inside my house and your mother's not telling you what to do, I'm going to tell you what to do. The way I would have snatched up that little kid and the way I would have twist his arm, you know, like twist his wrist a little bit and <laughs> grab the ring out of his hand so he can start battling and go to his mother. 
So the mother should know next time when I tell you to talk to your picnic, talk to your picnic. If the mother can't, if your child is in your house and the parent's not going to parent them, drapes up the kid. I'm not I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to drape up the kid. Up the not re- recommending that either because there's attention. laws against that. Um, <laughs> But there ain't no way that you're going into the garden with the ring. <laughs> like you're not, no. fro- you're not. Fro- That's what I'm saying. Like, how did the you get there? So you've gone. You've been in my bedroom. You've come downstairs and you're running around the house. And because your mum said, "Oh, leave him," that I must leave her. You're mad. Right. You're actually mad. You're crazy. So you would drape up the kid. Don't you? No, no, no. I'm not going to drape up the kid. But by my voice, you're going to know. You're going to give the ring back now. That's what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you're going to do it now. Yeah. And you, what you're also going to do is you're going to apologise to my wife for taking the ring in the bloody first place. Number one. And then Seriously. you're going to apologise to your mum. Yes, for <laughs> embarrassing her. No, the mum's going to apologise to me. <laughs> Let's be you're real. Unruly pick me out my yard, bro. I've been in like public spaces sometimes and I've seen little children whiling out on their parents and I will say to the little kid, that's not very nice, is it? You shouldn't talk to your mum mm. like that. Do you think that's nice to talk to your mum like that? Nah, I don't like disrespect. I'm not mm. up for it. And definitely not in my yard no with way. my belongings. Crazy. No way. No you way. did. You're not the arsehole. <laughs> no, you're definitely not. Definitely not. Uh, he's going to go next, number two. I don't mind. Okay. Yeah. Let me grab it. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, yeah. <clears throat> Am I the arsehole again? Cooked B-Day dinner for my husband. He ate it with the kids while I was still working. Now he's mad that I'm upset. Okay. (laughs) What? Here we go. (laughs) I work from home 11 to 7.30. Today was my husband's birthday. So I cooked him dinner in between meetings and on breaks. Okay. We have four grown children. Two are in school and two work full time. When our son got home at 5.30, he asked my husband if dinner would be ready soon. Otherwise, he's going to pick something up for himself. (laughs) <laughs> I see loads of problems already. Anyway, <laughs> my husband told him I'd made dinner and that they would eat at 6.30. So he and all the kids ate his birthday dinner while I worked and were long finished when I got done. My husband says I'm too sensitive and my feelings shouldn't be hurt. Wait, but I'm... wait, sorry. I'm so <laughs> sorry. What? Yeah, so basically... <laughs> I'm going to read that again for clarification. Go, go. <laughs> when our son got home at 5.30, he asked my husband if dinner would be ready <laughs> soon. Otherwise, he was going to pick something up for himself. Mm -mm. My husband told him I'd made dinner and that they would eat at 6.30. Bearing in mind that she finished work at at 7.30. Bloody hell. So he and all the kids ate his B-Day dinner while I worked and were long finished when I was done. My husband says I'm too sensitive and my feelings shouldn't be hurt. But I'm the only reason he had dinner or a cake or anything. Am I the asshole? Because I feel that they should have waited until I got off work to eat so I could be part of the celebration. Of also, this is not the first time. <gasps> that bit, this is not the first time they've done, done, they've eaten dinner without you or is it just birthday dinner? That's crazy. Honestly, some women are suffering. Some women are suffering. At least one of the kids should have said, no, we shouldn't eat without mum. Imagine. Damn, man. That's horrible. Okay. That's horrible. I'm sorry. That's no common courtesy at all. Like, this is what I'm talking about. You see, when I talk about, like, (laughs) some men, I'm going to say some men, yeah, they're just not nice people. (laughs) Do you know what I mean? They're just not nice. Like, how can you do that to your wife and then you're encouraging your children? What kind of example is that setting? But she said it's not the first time, so that's just a normal... That's ...what happens in the house. Firstly, let me tell you what I'm doing. (laughs) Number one... I ain't cooking shit. Number one. Yeah? <laughs> if this ain't the first time, I'm not cooking shit. And if I do feel like I want to treat you with a meal, mm. I'm going to cook afterwards. Mm. I'll season up the meat and I'm going to cook afterwards because I know how you lot stay. So I'm going to do that. So you're not the arsehole, my love. They're the arseholes. Your husband's an arsehole and your four <laughs> children are the arsehole. Wow. But slight you're an arsehole because you've, you've accommodated you've this behaviour yeah. and you've raised, this, you've raised these grown-ass children to come home from work and chat about they're going to get something for themselves. Everybody's suffering in that yard. Yeah. Yeah, no. Wow. No one's eating. That's what's happening. No one's eating ever. I'm taking all the food in the fridge and it's going in the bin. I'll be on strike for the next three years, trust me. Everybody would have to move out. I can't, I can't lie. That's, 
But I know I'm an extreme person. That's divorced. <laughs> <laughs> Get about it. You like, know what I would do? Mm. You know what I'm practising? I'm practising every man for themselves. Literally. I'm practising, mm-hmm. I'm going to buy single meals and I'm going to cook them I'd when I'm finished. But she works from home. Home is work. I can't even do that because it's like, you're like, why would I even put myself in that environment? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because then I'm suffering again. No, fuck all of you lot. Mm. Bye. Bye. It's enough now. Yeah, it's too much. Do you know what I mean? He said that she's too sensitive. She cooked him a nice meal for his birthday. Seriously. You didn't even eat it with her. She cooked it for you. All right, well, let's see how sensitive I can be. Here's papers. You see, I said Sign- he's going to be when he's hungry. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> That's what I'm doing. Wow. Okay, I think we've got time for one more. Marianne? Can I do number four? Go for it. Okay, am I the arsehole for not accepting an apology gift that seemed racist? Ooh. Me and my husband were at his family's annual giant Easter egg hunt. Nora, my husband's... My husband's ex. Okay. Nora, my husband's <laughs> ex, was also there... And she's known for being overly enthusiastic about giving kids Easter gifts. This year, she gave my daughter the only mixed race child. I'm black. My husband's white. Uh, This year, she gives my daughter the only mixed race child, a monkey stuffed animal. What? (laughs) Whilst every other child got more traditional bunnies, ducks and chicks. Yeah, I'm fighting. (laughs) Except one child who specifically specifically asked for a monkey. So to me, this fell off. My husband confronts Nora, asking why our daughter got the monkey. And Nora, why dad pulls off? You don't think I'm racist, do you? <laughs> Turning to me for sympathy or validation. I said, why are you crying? Oh, so she bust the tears. She must have. Okay. I said, why are you crying? You're the one who gave my daughter a monkey. Nora then has the audacity to tell me I should be grateful my daughter got anything at all. No, get the fuck That's out. That's when I lost it. Yeah. Nora then turns into this into a sub story about how she can't have children, calling us selfish. Then my father-in-law tells her she needs to leave. Good. Which she does, but not before screaming at me that I'm a terrible mother and basically making a scene. Later that day, she messaged my husband, trying to guilt trip him about choosing me over her. Yeah, that was definitely... Yeah. Yeah, see? The next day she posts on social media that she's been a victim of a racist, a victim of a racist accusation, painting herself as the angel who was just trying to give out cute gifts, but was yelled at and kicked out. She even started harassing me over Facebook messenger, calling me names to the point where I had to block her. So am I the asshole for standing my ground and refusing to accept what I saw as a racially insensitive gift? Am I overreacting? Maybe I came off too headstrong. Black women don't do that shit. No, No, you didn't. Mm -mm. Don't start second guessing yourself. (laughs) She gave your child a monkey. Yeah. I'm sorry. She gave your child a monkey. I'm sorry. I've never heard of the Easter monkey. No. I've Ah. never heard of it. Okay. (laughs) Also, Nora, you're the ex gal. Why are you there? Number one. What are you doing in the yard? Why are you coming around here trying to cause conflict? No. Were you expecting your ex-man, to my husband, to not say anything about the gift that you're buying for his child? I'm glad that the father-in-law told her to get lost. Yeah. But they should have told her to get lost a very, 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 very Before long she time got ago. To that place, mm-hmm. she shouldn't even be invited. Easter monkey. Are you okay? No. Then you're going on social media talking about you're the victim. What well, you're flipping it. You're doing, you're doing that, are we? Is that the game that you're playing? Okay, then. Mm. No. It's all types of wrong. <sighs> <laughs> Honestly. Honestly. I mean, it's good that she kept her cool, to mm-hmm. be fair. Do you know what I mean? And that she's got the support from her husband and her father-in-law. Do you know what I mean? Because that doesn't happen very often Mm. let's be real that's true do you know what i mean so like i think it's there so she shouldn't be second guessing herself any like period anyway right but like wow i just don't i i just these kinds of women just never surprise me that much because it's like like the hate that you have Mm -hmm. is so strong so because you're such a hater that your husband your ex-husband chose me Mm. over you yeah a black woman that you have to knock attempt to knock the confidence out of our child Mm -hmm. yes see that's a special kind of evil oh 
It's a special a kind special of evil. You hit the nail on the head. Seriously. No, it's evil. It's evil. It's literally but evil. But it's a special kind of yeah. evil. Literally. Seriously. Because she's trying to go from the core. Mm-hmm. You're trying to get the child at a very young yeah, age. Exactly. So they f- have like an identity crisis. Mm-hmm. Right. Why has everybody else got all these gifts? Why did I get this? Why did I get this? Why is mummy upset? Why did Why did um, daddy's ex have to leave? Why You're planting those seeds. She's planting there some dangerous the, seeds. Yeah, why was daddy's ex there in the first is, place? Is, this is the thing. Because but, I'm sure, I'm sure that type of, I mean, he, he divorced her. Mm. So I'm sure you know her. Well, maybe not that type of connotation, but she's got fucked up ways. She's yeah. one of those people. Well, hence, where your ex in the first exactly. place. Do you know what I mean? And sorry, sorry, uh, you know, sorry you can't have kids and everything like that. It's not your portion or mm-hmm. whatever. But you need to go and rebuild somewhere else. This ain't your space. Why am I there? Do you know what I mean? Fuck, you know. You need therapy, love. Seriously. I can't imagine. I'm just sitting there thinking, I cannot imagine not an ex going to their family's thing. I can't imagine it. No, no, it happens. Not unless you've got children. That shit, that yeah? shit If I've got children happen. with the person, maybe, yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't think it happens in our community that much. I'll be, no. I'll say, like, I feel that happens outside of our community. Yeah. Mm. I can't imagine. Around. I think you're right. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's not really common to us, I don't think. No. And she's probably going to be like, oh, we were together for a long time. His family's my family. She yeah. seems like that type of chick. And they really like me and stuff. But I can't lie, like, my vision is you're eating the monkey now. You're going to eat the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, you're gonna, you're gonna have to, because it's just too disrespectful. Yo. <laughs> like I can't. At every point, she knows what she's doing. Yeah, she turned when to she say, bought it. <laughs> she knows exactly who she's going to give it yeah. to. Yeah, because how many monkeys are around at Easter time? And do we really think that the other child wanted a monkey? Really, really. That was just your cover story. Really. Then you're crying doing fake tears then you're going on social media mm-hmm. yeah playing the victim then you're emailing or dming <laughs> dming or people whatever, facebook people messenger say, saying that they're the issue no mm-hmm. why did it's you choose her over me that's the that's the no. problem really that, that's it that's the problem how dare you choose this black woman over yeah me? literally black woman yes. yeah Who's given you a beautiful child? Monkey over me. Basically, basically, basically. Yeah. with your monkey child. Basically, basically. Yeah, basically. and now we're having monkey children. Yeah, basically, <laughs> that's what Ooh. she's saying. Seriously, sure. No, oh, I haven't really got time for a clutch my pearl. Special. No, unfortunately, <laughs> not this time. Okay. Not this time. But before we go, actually, let's uh, do a little quick spotlight. Is anyone you want to spotlight? <gasps> yes, I do want to Moments. spotlight somebody. Why the document left? Oh my gosh. So I want to spotlight a lady Mm -hmm. who was on um, Instagram. She was on the socials talking about, she was giving advice for people that hate Beyonce. I'm just basically (laughs) saying, (laughs) (laughs) there's ways to avoid (laughs) listening to Beyonce's new album. If you see something come up, don't click it. If you hear something come on the radio, Turn the channel. Mm-hmm. If you see something on the TV, turn it off. Mm-hmm. She was giving some sound advice of ways to avoid listening to the album so that you don't have to, you know, have it go into your brain. <laughs> so anyway, Miss Tina reposted it because the woman's oh, a comedian and she's a, so, out there and Miss Tina thought, this is great. That's the sound advice for anyone that doesn't want to hear the excellence of the album. Mm-hmm. So the woman, what's her name? I've forgotten it. Melissa oh, Watkins. Yeah. That's it. Melissa Watkins. Shout out to her because after Miss Tina posted it, she went online and she was basically like, we're basically cousins now. Oh, yeah. bless her. I'm, I'm, I'm going to see B. So that means that Solange saw it. That means that Blue saw it. That means that Beyonce's husband saw it. Yeah, I'm, fa- I'm family. I'm family. Okay. So shout out to her. It was just a really cute moment seeing a fan fan out and have it, you know, come back. Yeah. Very, very good. Me next? Yeah. I want to shout out Marvin Cole. She's a presenter on Good Morning Britain. Um, sometimes I think she's on there this week. Okay. And she's just started a podcast, which I think is going to be very important for us. It's called Trouble Politics. Um, I think it's on BBC Sounds, but I think in the current climate, we have the mayoral mayoral election on the 2nd of May. Mm. Oh, okay. And remember, you need ID to vote, people. So make sure you register to vote. And if you need to vote, you need ID. And also remember that it's first past the post for the mayoral... mayoral, 
can't say that. Mayor. Mayoral. Thank you. I can't say Election. Can't. <laughs> <laughs> that man there. That man there, yes. Yeah. So that's a bit, there's a huge change for that election. And obviously we need Rishi out. So there's going to be election at some point. So this programme, she's going to be interviewing a lot of political commentators from the black community who can talk us through what's going on, how to vote, who we should vote for, how we should get them out. And I think it's going to be really, really important for all of us to listen mm -hmm. to it. So I just wanted to spot like that. Amazing. Nice. Love that. Um, I talking about GMB. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh talking about that. We've had Miss ZZ Mills on there recently. And I just wanted to spotlight her again. Yeah. Because she done so well. And she was covering um for Richard one of Donald. the yeah, so entertainment section. And um they actually played an April Fool's joke on her and it was absolutely brilliant. Where they had one of the presenters like have these Marilyn fake Marilyn Monroe pearls and then they just bust open. Mm -hmm. And her face, she was so shocked. But it was just brilliant. She look great as well kind yeah. of thing i'm loving the hair loving the makeup and everything like that as well so yeah she's just living her best life Good at the moment her, man. yeah just i love, love it. that she was on that i love that that's what the, the gig that she got it's amazing because that's a hard gig as well you know like mm. you've got to be up at the crack of dawn to do gmb yeah it's it's a hard, it's hard out work the house as well she didn't mm. have to wait straight out the house yeah. man house. she's not being on there being interviewed for being in the that's house which is normally what presenting. happens they do the circuit she's on their guest presenting good yeah. girl and a good segment too yeah good yeah. girl well done. done really really well okay guys that is that that's the end of the show guys also please make sure you follow us on all the different platforms follow us on youtube on instagram on tiktok on x all of them we're everywhere we're even follow on us. facebook i swear yeah oh, yeah we are on <laughs> facebook yeah yeah i mean we got put out there there's people over a certain age that on that's facebook. true that's my, very, in fact very my true. mother sees us on facebook oh, okay Lovely shout out to Farah's mum. Um, but also, Mariam, mm. thank you so much. I'm going to cry. I'm Seriously. Quite emotional. You've been with us for, what is it, four weeks? Five. This five is my weeks. fifth show. Oh my yeah. God, five weeks. Now, and the end, the is, end is Oh my near. God, copyright. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, we have a little something for you. Oh, for real? Yeah, we do. Just to say thank you. Just bring what's out of the bag, please. Thank you. But yeah. Yeah, I so want just to say what's on that bag. <laughs> <laughs> Just oh, to say thank you oh, for everything. So we really sweet. appreciate thank you very it. Much for showing Everybody up. was just, you know, just loves having you on. Oh, that's so sweet, ladies. Definitely <laughs> gonna have. Oh, um, thank you. That's you really on cute, again. Man. We're gonna see you again You're as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm not going anywhere. An honorary yes. auntie. Yes. And so yeah. yeah. It's been Thank great. Thank you, ladies. I actually, I told Sade, I woke up this morning, I was like, oh, it's my last show. Oh. I actually, I'm getting, I was getting used to the routine. Oh. Yeah. I quite like it. Yeah. I quite like it. It's been fun. It's been great. I've loved every minute of it. Mm -hmm. um, you guys are doing an amazing job. Oh, thank and I'm just, you. And I'm just honoured that you trusted me. I mean, of yeah. course. With your platform, I'm glad I didn't fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all, man. Thank you, ladies. This is so sweet. Thank you so much. You're very, very Thank welcome. Thank you, Shabu. You're welcome. It's been fun. I oh. know, isn't it? <laughs> but thanks, guys. Next week, the ladies are back. Both AK and Nana are back from their travels. And also, guys, it's my birthday. Yeah. 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 She's 21. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Again, for the fifth time. No, <laughs> <laughs> but we are actually going to celebrate. We're going to have a great episode next week, but we're going to celebrate on Saturday the 13th at Room 187. And we have a discount code if you guys want to come and party with us. It's going to be fun. There's like games and things like that as well. And lots and lots of great R&B. So you're fit yeah. into R&B and definitely do that. It's in Angel, Angel yep. Rooms? Angel, is it? Angel in? Rooms, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rooms, is that what's yeah. good? North yeah, yeah. Sides. Yeah, of course, we'll put a link there. But there's a discount code where you can get, I think, about 38% off. Oh. Um, and it's RM55. So we'll put all the details in the description box. But yeah, you can see Come that. and party with us. Come and yeah. celebrate Charlotte's birthday. Come and celebrate our four-year anniversary. Yes. Come and celebrate the fact that Marianne's done an amazing job. Come and celebrate yes. the fact yeah. that that's we just fun. like to celebrate. Yeah. To Come yeah. and do it, man. Come, Come and, and do the life. thing. It's yes, going to be great. It's going to be fun. Yeah. But guys, thank you so much. See you next week. Bye. Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye.